There we go. Nice. Press the button. We should be live around about. All right, that now. The, the live thing we have in the corner is fucking with me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we're good. We're good. We, we are live. I think we are live. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Hello everyone. The law crimes people. Hello. What's happening? Welcome back, criminal scum. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we didn't even have time to start, and there's already a VTuber comment. You were a yeah. Are you sure you're not a farseer? Oh, no. DJ Beast again commenting about how Colin has actually made his bed, mm. and <laughs> when will, when will he watch any movie? <laughs> right. Well, that that you know that first first one, you know it's a little bit rough right now, but you, you'll do what you, you do what you got to do. That second one, don't, don't ask me that one. <laughs> When's the last time you went to the cinema? I, it's been months, and before He's like there and there are the long months between them. Jeez. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was Oppenheimer. God, what a thing to go back today. to! I mean, it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. It had a little bit too many boobs in it for my taste, though. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I say the last movie I saw in the cinema was the last Star Wars film that came out, so that was way. Oh back. my gosh! Andy. Wait, episode nine? Wait, like what? Yeah. <laughs> What a what a horrible movie to end yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, I've been scarred. I can't but, go back to But Andy, it's now we're dangerous. all the Sith. <laughs> yeah. I'm all the Jedi. Isn't that cool? <laughs> if I'm all the Jedi. Didn't you get that? I am all the fast oh. food chains. Did, 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 did you like the fleet of Star Dest- or, or Death Star yeah. Star Destroyers? Yeah. And, and then they kissed and off and on again. And then they, they kissed <laughs> and they then he died. Fly up. It's fine. Anyway, oh, we're not here to talk about that toss. We're here to talk about <laughs> some other toss. Um, Colin, what oh, are you talking about? <laughs> the episode nine of the Warhammer Law. Oh, we, come on. <laughs> we, are, uh, we are talking about uh, Craft Worlds today, the five major ones, as there are a decent amount of Craft Worlds, but a lot of them have lore that just straight up doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Uh, oh, so it's really just okay. going to be the main big five, uh, Alitak, Altansar, Ulthway, Ayandan, and Beiltan. Uh Before that, though, we do have to, I think, get into the question of the week. As we did, uh, I think we asked last time, what would you do if um, you had immortality? Yeah, you did. Know, I, <laughs> I, 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 did, I didn't mean to say Altansar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we asked people last week um, what would they do if they had immortality within the Warhammer universe, and there were some responses. Um, we had the first one here by uh, at Spartan Pippapool six two two nine. He puts hashtag immortal. I would stand by Manfred's corpse, guarding it from getting resurrected, <laughs> and use his grave as a latrine <laughs> just in case he got resurrected. So he turn up. So he turned into a shit demon. The oh first character that God. needs him. Not a, not a turd demon. We don't need that. Nice. Uh, here, a donation here by uh, Rolf. Thank you very much. Thank brother. you, Rolf. He says a special thank you to Colin for introducing me to the glory that is Goshrek and Felix, and especially Hell the yeah. funny Rat Man. Also, what Good. are the group's thoughts of the end and the death volumes? We might have to save our um, thoughts on a specific episode <laughs> yeah. because there's a lot. To go through that, basically, to my, to my team, I have not even started the end of the death yet because I'm waiting wow. for them on audio books to be in, in my library. That's the only ones I haven't done. I've done all the Siege of Terror, I've done all of Horus Heresy. I just need to catch up with those now they're all out. For a, for a quick thought from someone who hasn't read them, it seems the consensus from everyone I've heard talk about it is it did not need to be three books. Mm, quite long. So, um, the Hobbit movie effect. <laughs> yeah, so it could have. <laughs> It doesn't. It could have been just two very long ones, though, because I think the middle book they like the gap between those threads being closed. It was clearly Dan Abnett didn't want to make it three books, but yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> so did GW realize they were running out of Horus Heresy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep it going. Edge it just a bit longer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have another one here by at Killer Orca. Thank you. It's good. I mean, same thing, really. Uh, I'd spend my time fucking with the big movers and shakers of the series. There must be some massive painting on terror depicting a glorious victory by Lord Solar Leonitas. Or Leontus, <laughs> sorry. And then in the corner, that's me in the Aquila gang puffy jacket throwing the Aquila. Uh, gang, gang. <laughs> gang, gang some warfare there. Uh, Supreme jacket. Nice. DJ Beast. We have one by the illustrious nice. DJ Beast. 
yeah. regular a supporter of the channel. He puts, I'm going full Colin with this. I'd go on the biggest degenerate journey across the galaxy <laughs> from Comra to the Ghoul Stars. Nowhere is safe. The Neuralictor got me acting unwise. <laughs> oh, come on. Good man. Come on. <laughs> oh, brother. Um, and the last one here is by at um, Gage Brown nine nine fifteen. He put, "I'd flip off Nagash, content in the knowledge he could never do anything about it." Nice. That's pretty good, too. L. Um, L. He probably could do something <laughs> for about you. it, though. <laughs> he probably could do something about it, too, though, because Nagash is nothing but petty and has ego problems the size of an entire universe. The mortal realms uh, belong to him. And no one else just realizes it yet. It, we're all just living yeah. in his world. Uh, to be fair, though, that was thank you so much for your submissions for that one. I, people have suggested for other questions that we we do, we we, we will take them. We appreciate that support, mm. but we do have another one. I do believe Andy for this week. Um, do you want to explain I, what the question? Oh, sorry, Colin, do you want to take it? I'd just like to briefly get in and complain about the poll, Andy. I can oh, have okay. carbs as long as I have my <laughs> insulin. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, but how ma how many uh, can you have before it becomes a problem i the only problem there is my weight <laughs> <laughs> true there, there was another yeah. comment that i didn't include where someone said if colin became immortal would he have to change his channel name <laughs> to pancreas now works um <laughs> No, yes, am I immortal? An, am I immortally um, diabetic? Yeah, I was gonna say, you need an immortal insulin pump too. <laughs> no, it's just your, you have a superpower of giving people diabetes. Like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. oh, well, I wanted a sandwich. But, oh. You'll want feel the effects sandwich. in a few hours, and then it's gonna be really bad if you don't have insulin. <laughs> We're Nagash, in a fight right no now fear. With a big war, insulin. No, no minutes, insulin. Oh, you're gonna prove <laughs> fear. Um, uh, like so if everyone's putting their their pikes down. They just hear the beep. He's like, "Sorry, guys, just go." <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Today, because we're doing some Eldar stuff, some uh, Eldar scum, some knifier stuff. Uh, our hashtag is hashtag path. Which path of the Eldar would you create if you could make one for yourself? Um, is has anyone got an example of one they'd make? In the team of, of a fun Eldar path, path of bad taste, you you get to enjoy movies <laughs> like the ninth Star Wars film, <laughs> <laughs> and like you just wholeheartedly like open weeping cry at how amazing crappy <laughs> crappy adaptations are. And um, you'd be the happiest person in the room, but everyone would <laughs> start crying. <laughs> yeah, everyone thinks you suck. <laughs> I don't know. That would be like uh, path of the bad taste, or like in some something better than that. My I'm favorite sure movie got... is Solo, a Star Wars story. Like, ugh. <laughs> Listen, okay, the Witcher adaptation is by far the most superior <laughs> TV adaptation that's oh, ever man. been. No, God, I can't All right, that. okay. My boy, it's the Halo show. Uh, for, oh, for the we, amount of maybe should explain I've seen in the comments are like if I, no, season two is quite good you should watch it i'm like i'm not watching that I, 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 I compared to a one out of ten a three out of ten is a masterpiece yeah mm. what's a one out of ten for you though the halo show season the halo one show, yeah. god that is horrible <laughs> there we go oh, your action man. set it off as of time recording do you like the, the bit in the trailer for season two where he told cortana to Shut up because clearly Master Chief would say that to Cortana. Oh, man. because of the pain in your face, man. The pain on your face is oh, god. I love, I love modern hell. Halo, I love the modern game industry. Can we talk about elves, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. supposed to be yes. my happy place right now. Yeah, we, we have, <laughs> we have sort to of mediate it with a little bit of despair before we get Colin in his happy place. Yeah. That's how it works. Something that's a little bit more, um. <clears throat> You know, bit bit warmer to the heart though, a, a kind of favorite of Colin. Um, oh, well, I think Fancy probably kickstarted it for you, right, Colin? But then Eldine Forty K is still a dub. Yeah, they're they're my they're my little Forty K enclave. <laughs> We're gonna go into Craft Wars though. Life in the Craft Worlds. Who's got the best? You know, racing stripes on their Craft World. Who's got everything? We're ready to go in. Let's go. All right, Eli, you want to take us away with the beginner? Yeah, I can start a little bit. We are talking about craft rules. As Colin said, the big five, we might say one or two things about everyone else, but most of the craft world lore is craft worlds dying and losing, so right. we might skim past it. 
more or less. I shouldn't um, have given it so much hype. In the beginning, then. <laughs> welcome, well, the big the big to... five are cool. Okay, the big five. Welcome are cool. to depression. The it's it's, it's like story. when you know, like GW, like in a, I don't know what book about like the guard or something, and a space marine chapter you've never heard of shows up. They're going to die to make the main character do something important. Yeah. True. True. Uh, uh, for context, the craft world is basically a like continent to moon sized big giant spaceship that is pretty much a giant city and living place for the Eldar. They all ran away when uh, before the fall happened, so they were the last ones to survive other than the Jukari and the Exodites. They have their little infinity circuits where all their dead reside and float around in the craft world, so they're protected from Slanesh. Uh, the main craft worlds, we got Alatok. They have lots of cool rangers because they're very stuck up and a lot of people don't want to live there. They also have a good fleet. And they're smartsy smarts. It's battle, same hands, really fast. They're red. They have like tribal families and stuff. They're one of my favorites. Bealtan is very militaristic and returns it to tradition type of guys. Uh, Ulthway is Eldrad. And what's the last one that I. Eandin is the yellow guys who have lots of Wraith Lords, Custard. lots of spear stuff. They got eaten by Tyranids, so they have probably the most lore, which again is just them. <laughs> being eaten by tyranids, it's but it's there like, they're the only ones with the codex supplement <laughs> yeah written by matt ward <laughs> the monkey <laughs> spot girl <laughs> um, my favorite is the black library because they publish warhammer books <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i always forget that that's a craft rule yeah. I, yeah that always throws me off mm -hmm. um and then the we have conventions just weird isn't it though like, why yeah. like you know la talk all the way black library <laughs> <laughs> We had yeah, we had a nice you know Gaelic thing going, and then suddenly black library. <laughs> yeah, and all the elder are just there going. Shh. I do have a small question though. Were the craft worlds when they were made? Were they simply just merchant things in the beginning? And I don't know if I'm getting that right. Or they were simply exile ships designed by people who were like, "That's cringe. I'm going to go away from society and study the blade." <laughs> they, Eli, do you want to get it? I don't even I don't remember. Oh, they were honest. basically <laughs> just merchant ships. Like their whole thing was uh they, be, they because they had no like warp drives on their ships, they just kind of floated between the Eldar Empire. So they saw how uh everyone else was getting a little bit too goofy for their liking. And then they started like <laughs> evacuating like art, culture, people, all the stuff they could take off of them that wanted to leave what was uh the Eldar Empire that was pretty quickly circling around the drain by that point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, well, someone asked if they missed the Exodites in the chats. You did not miss the Exodites. They do exist, but they're not a craft world. So They're not. They're they also don't have any lore, last I checked. <laughs> they have dinosaurs and Ted Kaczynski, and that's it. They'll probably be a kill team at some point. Hopefully. Yeah, that'd be nice. They are really cool. Maiden worlds are nice and pretty. Uh, but there lastly, that, um, Clancy Brown voiced an Exodite in the Warhammer show. I was like, oh, it's mm. Mr. Krabs. That's pretty cool. <laughs> There's the Mug on Raw's craft world has a little bit of lore. Is that Alton Czar? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, that's Alton Czar. They got thrown into the warp and then... out of a spot. <laughs> and, then... <laughs> and then they got rescued by Mug on Raw later on. Uh, but yeah, that's the very basic rundown i really can't go in depth at all because there's not enough or i'll just take away from colin um but i'll talk about bealtan later and colin's gonna talk about the other guys but right now indeed uh so yeah this is uh not strictly speaking history of any eldar in particular although when we get to Ulthway, you know that's gonna be real hard to pull off but you know just like the craft worlds uh as a whole so like uh, like eli said you know hal uh, it all they've all got the same basic origins. Uh, they were really just glorified trading vessels, although that in mind trading vessels with space elf magic to their very core. So you know they're still big planet sized magical ships. but compared to the rest of the Elder Empire, nothing you know too great. And uh, no warp engine. So instead of you know going through the warp like the elders still could have by that point, they just kind of floated across reality. And uh, this That's led a to dumb the question: Are Go some nuts. craft worlds bigger than other craft? As in, like literally in size, are some craft worlds yeah. bigger than others? Mm -hmm. There's no like standard one size fits all for the craft worlds, and some of them have come down with a bad case of getting exploded. Too big. 
So, oh, oh, well, okay. Well, too big or exploded. So they've had to either split off or have been split off. Like uh, some of them have over time had to jettison parts of their structure. Uh, so, you yeah, know, they're not a, there's no one size fits all. My craft world could beat up your dad. Which one's the biggest? Which one's the biggest? <laughs> Do you reckon that actually well, I don't comes know up how... as, like a my craft world is bigger than yours? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like... I think BL10 was the biggest one, but I'm not it, sure. Uh... It was Iandan and then Bealtan, and then okay. it gets a little bit muddy. Uh, but yeah, so because they didn't, you know, have warp travel, they would spend a long period of time anyone on the craft worlds without actually talking to anyone outside of the craft world. Uh, so they could see they had a very unique view of things, and that they were the only ones who saw just how far gone the Eldar who just lived on the planets were really getting. And when things started getting really bad, you know, Slash was on the horizon. A couple, a lot of them uh, realized they better, they better just leave because uh, things are not looking very good right now. And uh, so they started evacuating people. They started anything they could get from their home worlds that could fit. Just started piling it on and getting the hell out of the Eldar core worlds because it was it was not looking to it good. And uh, the rule of thumb is that if a craft world exists, it got far enough away from the birth of Slanesh. Sure enough, when that happened, you know, we get the Eye of Terror, warp storms everywhere, things weren't great. And now the Elder Empire is dead and gone. Uh, 99% of them went with it. Uh, of course, not all of them quite managed to get out. You know, I've said the ones we know of today did. I don't and I don't think they ever gave a specific number, but plenty of the ones that were built didn't did not get out in time, so they got slanashed, even though they didn't really do anything. Getting slanashed sounds like were... the actual phrase of I've got slanashed. You can't even put in... Yeesh, you can't I put mean, into words quite what that would entail. I, I, yeah, I couldn't they're... help but I've, I've been working my Fabius file scripts and I did a line that's something like his experiments cause Lanesh to salivate with the corruption. He's like, mm. <laughs> couldn't help but be like, yeah, they like Fabius, even though he's like, God's a cringe. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't know what it's like to be caught in Slanesh's grip, but it's probably moist. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> when, when I described the fall, though, like when I said it on a previous stream, like when Logar saw it, he described it like a rippling wave of demon flesh. So that's basically <clears> what it. <throat> And then your soul would just be instantly like yoinked, and then it was tortured and eaten forever. So that was. So you know, I can imagine being in the <clears throat> inside of a ship. Was it? I think because it happened in the Eye of Terror, right? But I assume it's yeah. Not that like, was the like. There's a certain radius where like it probably went further because the Eye of Terror doesn't look like it's you know what I mean like a third of the yeah. Of and galaxy. they were across the galaxy. I think I think that's one of those things they never set like you know a, a set line where it's like yes this many light years is the danger zone. Outside of that you're you're good. Uh, this is but... a small question as well. Did other did, I think other things got eaten as well or things that just live near the Eldar like other Xenos and yeah. If, if you if you were unfortunate to live near the Eldar Empire, you know you also got sucked into the Eye of Terror. Uh... Uh, just it was a just few poor Jakaro just being like, "What's going on?" <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I just, I'm just building my monkey stuff. Hell. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, and I then uh... to return to monkey, and then it's just like, "Hello, <laughs> hello, hello. I'm Slanesh. You look tasty." Uh, yeah, so that that was not great. Uh, the two ones, the major exceptions that didn't quite manage to get out, but we still know exist, was Ulthway and Alton Sar. Uh, Alton Sar was just swallowed whole by the Eye of Terror. The only one who got out was uh, Maugen Ra, uh, re a real one, for real. <laughs> and uh, Ulthway half made it out, uh, kind of getting caught, and I think it was it's described as the gravity of the Eye of Terror, which I guess is interesting to know that it has gravity. Mm -hmm. uh, but it uh, they, they couldn't get too far away, so they, they got to fight a lot of demons. And also, after the birth of Slanesh, when Cain got sharded, all those little shards that turned into the Avatar of Cain landed across the craft worlds and drove everyone into a little bit of a murder frenzy. So even though they got away from Slanesh, now Cain is indirectly killing all of the Eldar again. Oh, because no. his favorite hobby is to kill elves. All that revenge for existing, am I, I right? Yeah. How, how dare you? 
as much as the shame as like Kane does get like sort of ruined in law, they kind of don't give him the treatment he deserves. He certainly, in a way, deserves a good slap though. He's oh yeah, he's a dick. He's, <laughs> he's, such he's a dick. He's awful. If it weren't for the fact that he always loses, no one would be asking for more <laughs> Cade wins. It's just he's oh. he's lost so many times. Is he like the Nagash that... of? No, not as bad as Nagash. No, because at least when Nagash loses, he's doing something cool, and he's yeah. otherwise going to blow up the world. Kane's just fighting two space marines and some like a squad of guardsmen, and he gets bodied. <laughs> All right, God. then. Well, well, there's always like I always find it weird that like. Kane and Korn are quite similar. They have like that warish fighting thing. So like, but I, and it's really really difficult to distinguish. Like, what makes them particularly different? Other than one's a demon guy, one's an Eldar guy. They're both red. They're both like swords. They both cause their men to go mental and bloodthirsty frenzies. It's like, oh, we've got Korn at home, and it's Kane. Like, poor guy. Uh, my way I look at it is that Kane is older. Uh, he's from the War in Heaven, not whatever Korn. Know, popped into reality and he doesn't quite you know corrupt you he's not a chaos god even though he is a warp god so you know kane's influence you know, he'll drive you a little bit crazy a little bit nutty but you're not gonna grow tentacles out of your spine or any shit like that like can happen mm. with corn isn't kane more like corn's <laughs> more war and blood and kane's more murder and yeah kane's also just happy for you to murder someone in cold yeah, blood he, he doesn't it, he necessarily doesn't need it to be in war doesn't need to be. It could be sneaky just as well. Corn without the honor, just like stab him in the back. It's fine. It's good yeah. fun. It's fine. It's it's fantasy lore, but there are human cults dedicated to Cain, and they're not they're yeah. not warrior cults. They're just murderers. They're they're the Dark <laughs> Brotherhood. Oh God! So yeah, hear, he's. I can hear Cicero's voice <laughs> <laughs> in my in my ear. <laughs> The, the, the night, night came. Was it the night mother? Hey, <laughs> Majesta. Oh, I sleep in its so corpse. <laughs> what would, what would be worse, opening your door and finding Cicero in your room or Meridia's beacon? <laughs> oh, Meridia's beacon. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was maybe like a, they patched in that you could originally drop the beacon and she'd basically go, what's wrong with you, scum? <laughs> but they got rid of that. Of course they got rid of it, because that's all anyone did. <laughs> but you can never drop the beacon, but luckily it weighs nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The worst thing uh, is trying to find the beacon, though, because then if you're trying to look for it and get two I've... dawn... Is it Dawnbreakers? You get two Dawnbreakers. <laughs> I think, right? I don't I know, you know can that. get two of them. Yeah. You can get two. I mean, it, with, with Bethesda glitches, you can probably get a million <laughs> other things if you just duplicate them, right? <laughs> just reminds me of playing Oblivion and then getting like a bunch of arrows and doing the, the duplicate. Just like, wheels of cheese! Oh, yeah, <laughs> still love the necromantic one though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, after after Slanesh was born, most of the craft worlds just kind of focused on hiding and trying to survive. Which you know, like you said, uh, Hal, people who weren't Eldar were feeling the effects of Slanesh's birth, and they're not inherently connected to her. So the Eldar were in a bit of a you know like a panic, a shutdown mode, which I you know I I don't blame them for, uh, and. Uh, just yeah, for the most part, they just didn't want to be involved in anything. I mean, yet yeah, Orican felt Slanesh's birth. He doesn't. He doesn't have a soul. So they were they were just kind of hiding. Uh, some individuals were active. You know, Eldrad was makes a couple appearances in the Horus Heresy. So not you know all of them collectively shut themselves in, but most of them did. That being said, uh, early on in their history, two craft rules were doing stuff. Biltan and Iandin. Uh, Iandin did most of the actually productive stuff. Yeah, I have my favoritism. What about it? <laughs> Come on. Uh, uh, what do you want? I, I like my ghost robots or the army uh -huh. I collect for them. Uh, them, a spirit seer known as Melindri Silversalt, which elfist name I think I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a bard from Baldur's Gate or something. Yeah. Uh, mated the mated made the infinity circuits, which is how the Eldar keep their souls from Slanesh's grip when they die. They go in the soul stone, they put their soul in that, and then they get plopped into purgatory, which is better than Slanesh. Uh, I ended did that, and then they then they shared it with everyone, and they said that guys, we got this cool new invention, we can save our souls. Let's let's get back out there. Let's take back the Eldar Empire, and to that. Almost every other craft world said, thank you for the free stuff. Good luck with it. <laughs> uh, not not the most supportive group of fellas. Except for Bealton. Uh Hey, Bealton decided they were going to help. Uh, they wanted a 
They really wanted the glory back because they're the uh, Imperium, but with pointy ears. So they they agreed to help Beel or Iandon, and uh, it went pretty well at first. Beel Tan went throughout the eastern half of the galaxy. Iandon took the western half. And they did a pretty good job in making sure chaos wasn't an issue for a few thousand years, uh, just keeping things clean. Uh, you know they would uh and yeah, pardon me, frequently you know. Webway gates connect all the craft worlds, so it's really just a short walk, no matter how far away they are. They would go on joint ventures, they'd let the other do their thing. Usually BL Tan would focus on, you know, going out there doing the offense while Iandon would rebuild and colonize. And it was good for a while, but over time things would drift apart. Uh Iandon felt BL Tan was just a bit too focused on only reclaiming maiden worlds. Like they couldn't even colonize yet. And Perhaps just a little bit too much genocide for the <laughs> Iandan Eldar to be comfortable with. Uh, if you happen to live on a maiden world, your life was now forfeit as far as Bieltan cared. Uh, and Bieltan, for their part, felt that Iandan was letting the lesser races claim what was very rightfully theirs, since maiden worlds were Eldar worlds created millions of years ago. And in Bieltan's eyes, Iandan was just letting them squat there on their property. Uh, and then, you know, just they just generally weren't committed enough, is what Bieltan felt. Uh, over time, this led to them slowly drifting apart, which culminated in Iandon basically unofficially cutting ties and just not responding to Bieltan whenever they asked for help anymore, which Bieltan took as a huge betrayal. And, you know, they were pretty mad about it, but they got over themselves and went about crusading as they did. Uh, and the rest of the craft worlds, you know, began to take shape into what they would become. Uh, Simhan had its Wild Riders. Ultway was its is the Seer faction. Alitok has its Rangers. I end in the Wraiths after getting obliterated by everyone in the galaxy ever. And Bieltan uh, just again being. I don't want to call them particular. I don't want to call them particularly evil because this is <laughs> Warhammer and not liking people that don't look like you is kind of the standard assumption. They're like the Black Templars of the. Elder. Yeah, that's 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 a good it's, way. It's to... on the edge of like if it was by our modern standards, it's like yikes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Bieltan. Uh as a general rule of thumb across the craft worlds, they will be ruled by their seer council. Uh they read fate, you know, look through the webs of all the different possibilities, like what was it I was once a, a Doctor Strange from Infinity War, just looking at all the timelines, <laughs> doing their best, although not quite as good as him, unfortunately. Uh, and they try and guide their craft world on a path best suited just uh, to victory, but oftentimes just survival. Uh, this is my, this is what I, this is my line where I cope about the Eldar losing all the time. <laughs> uh, although it seems many times as if the Eldar are defeated, it's often that the defeat now will result in fewer lives lost than later, which means the greatest Eldar victory is this. I think this is even something that, like, if you look at. Like Farseer lore, the greatest Eldar victory is one you will never know happened because it technically didn't. That's, that is the most zinch of all responses. That's such though, a cop isn't it? Yeah. It's such a cop out. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> but hey, there are. We failed we successfully. Win so good, you don't even know we've won. It's like, mm, it's there like are playground thing. There are like, some. Yeah, win. There are some examples like uh, Eldrad early on it looked like he just all he did was lose a battle against orcs that was just pretty awful but it prevented the craft worlds from going to war against each other and blowing each other all up so hey it does work still mm. results in dead elves which i'm not a fan of but you know it is what it is <laughs> <Andy's now smiling. laughs> uh, dead elves they usually go into the spirit stones though so i mean they do so, recycling. You know, not always though sometimes sometimes yeah. that don't happen uh Fine. they do end uh the last, you know, the general thing. Oh, two last general things. Uh, their military is the Aspect Warriors, but as a result of them being a, a dying race, not always a lot of Aspect Warriors to go around. In fact, if you're not BL Tan, you probably don't have as many Aspect Warriors as you would like. They also don't, but that's not really for supply reasons. That's just because they want more people to murder with. Uh, so their military will be equal parts militia. You know, they're called the, you know, the, like Guardian Defenders. Uh, stuff like that on the tabletop. They're just 
non-warrior path Eldar who get grabbed up uh, are given a temporary war mask to block the horrors of war out and are told to go shoot whatever is bothering the Eldar today. Those will make up a lot of the military. Last thing before I go on a bit is just uh, that whole path system thing. So why why did uh, why did Slanesh happen? It's because the Eldar experience emotions far stronger than any other being, and their psychic power means that has a lot of an echo in the warp, which, when they started getting real generate, led to Slanesh. So the Phoenix Lords, the uh, demigods, a good word I would think, uh, like modern day Eldar demigods, created the path system, which is basically, let's say. Uh, the big ones are obviously, you know, the Path of the Warrior, like uh, Dire Avenger, Warp Spider. But there will be, like, paths for everything. You know, path of the Botanist, Path of the McDonald's, Fry Cook, <laughs> anything you can think of. Path is of probably exile. the Exile. Yeah, Path of the yeah, Exile. Do it, do it. <laughs> that, one's a, that one's a book, man. How did yes. I miss that? <laughs> Although, to be fair, Path of the Exile is kind of just going, I don't want to deal with the path system, yeah. so it's a bit weird. Part of the law master, path having, of the a, war having master. a skill that you cannot use in any other job. <laughs> <laughs> path of the deep fryer to keep everyone fed. Yeah, uh, it's half of the laying in bed all day and not doing anything. <laughs> it's a, it's basically they're going to lock themselves in to one path and just focus the hell on that to a ridiculously disciplined degree, so they don't have to worry about you know any like temptations or stray thoughts or anything catching them off guard. They focus all of their effort on the one thing they're all about. It's not necessarily always, you know, like boring discipline warrior stuff, like, you know, path of the musician or something. They do have fulfilling non murder people jobs. It's just that, you know, you're on the path of the electric guitarist. You are only going to be playing the electric guitar for about a thousand years. Don't even uh, look at an acoustic one. Yeah. Scum. And so this is on your case. case. Mm. Yeah, and you can switch, like part of the path of the command is that you've walked other warrior paths, so you know the experience of several. Uh, it's just that while they're on that path, you're off it. Which I've seen some people online say that sounds like they just fall to Slanesh again because it's all about perfection. But the thing about the path system is that the end goal isn't mastering that skill. It's just a natural result of doing the same thing over and over again, day just in, discipline. day out for forever. Yeah. It'd be like, even if I go, like, go back to the, car, the guitar, I don't really have too much of an interest in learning the guitar. But if I did that for the next 10 years of my life and only worked on mastering the guitar, I'd probably be pretty decent at playing it. Do each parts of the craft world have like, are they all split into these different sections or different paths? Do you know that? Uh, so the, uh, at least the warrior paths do have their own shrines on the craft worlds. Uh, so those paths I know have their own little sections off of the uh, in the craft worlds. I'm not as sure about like other ones. Like I don't, the, the path of the village drunk probably doesn't need a shrine. Uh, Everywhere's but, a shrine when you get drink. <laughs> I you know, hey, you know you got you got a good point. The whole craft hey, world's the shrine. <laughs> Where's the Guinness, brother? Uh, but <laughs> overall, like that's one of those things where that, I can't even say that's an Eldar thing. It's a Warhammer lore aspect that isn't about the war, so it's a little underdeveloped. Thank you, Jake Thornton, for Path of the VTuber. I, I <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah, Path of the yeah. VTuber. Path of the Blood Raven. Come on. <laughs> You're just a thief. And what if we did an episode where we all had like avatars instead of and had they like moved? <laughs> it's like VTuber avatars. That'd be something. We call those the quizzes, Hal. <laughs> I mean, like, no, but like, like it actually moved along with us. Oh, I, those things. Like a proper one. From what I've heard about and i like talking to some, like those things are complicated as hell. Mm. Although, I mean, either way, you need to, you need to pay to like get the rigging up. Uh, so. Nope. <laughs> it's not yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not that de dedicated to the bit. We've already got our faces out there. This is this is the amount, <clears throat> most amount of motion anyone's gonna get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, no amount of anime avatar is gonna sound like I have any emotion in my voice. I, I don't know what to tell you <laughs> on that one, fellas. <laughs> you have a great voice. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm I'm a fan. It's just trying to imply I'm feeling any sort of emotion at any given moment. A little bit hard. <laughs> hmm. I am excited. I am literally happy. Like Captain Hulk quaking yeah. in my <laughs> boots. I'm actually getting excited. There's a Mandalore <laughs> video where it's got like 
something like that, a bit like that. <laughs> um, to be fair, all of us, when we first started out, I'm pretty sure all of our voices were like, oh, did anyone here like ever heard their first video again yeah. recently? Yeah. You know I am. God. Oh, yeah. My first vi- uh, yeah. Agony. <laughs> My first <laughs> video is so bad. I can't even it, yeah. actually physically I, I feel a physical wound when I listen to my, my voice is like the it created a tear in the wall. <laughs> I, uh, I make a joke about sounding uh, you know very neutral. Dude, my first few videos better than what I was doing at first. I sounded like I was two steps away from putting a gun to my head. <laughs> I sounded horribly depressed. <laughs> Which I guess to be fair, I started doing that when I was student teaching. So no. that was... <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> mine did, mine through sounded like it. I was under threat. <laughs> like it was like I was reading off of a hostage note. So uh, I mean, my, the... my, mine has gone lower as time has gone. I've gone from like, "Hello, everyone, I'm doing it," and I'm like, "I'm talking about the 40 verse millennium." It's like, oh, you can see the trend of just trying to get lower and lower and lower, <laughs> and shredding my voice a bit. Uh, yeah, that's that's like that's the general across the board uh, Eldar things. Like I was saying. Bealtan and Iand didn't kind of focus on it for now because they were leading the show for a bit on a craft world level. All the others were kind of just doing their thing, doing their best to not get devoured by either Slanesh or a galaxy full of things that hate them. Bealtan and Iand and early on were uh, going, going off. But with that, you know, we're gonna we'll get to the specifics. We're gonna start with Iand and then you know, Eli, I'll throw it your way a bit for some Bealtan. Uh, but I end in, uh, I'm doing it. I do my favorite first. <laughs> uh, it was, it was once what keyword once the most populous craft <laughs> world, uh, by a pretty fair margin. <laughs> then they got past tense. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, it, and then, it, and then it very abruptly wasn't, <laughs> oh, uh, they have a goof there. Whoops. <laughs> probably the, like the, like the, like the closest to good Eldar, like how a lot of factions are in 40k, because their whole thing was like they focused on cleaning the galaxy of like chaos and all that, you know, bad stuff. And they did, they did a pretty good job of it. Uh, their little their sections of the galaxy for thousands of years basically had no chaos taint in them. They said they were the largest craft world, so they could levy a lot of forces. Uh, they had support of Bealtan early on, and even when they lost that, they were still the largest craft world. They were they were pretty good at what they did, and then if you if you played Halo Wars, you know, setback after setback, loss after loss, things were no longer going in I Andin's favor. Uh, and then I'm gonna be honest, most of what I have written for them is just getting their ass kicked. <laughs> uh, first, you know, there was that whole you know dissolution of the alliance with BL Tan. Then uh, Prince Uriel makes his appearance and starts leading them into some pretty glorious wars. Not many casualties. He's doing pretty good. And then because his arrogance gets the best of him, an otherwise hugely successful war against a Chaos Space Marine warband, like they were getting obliterated, uh, results in a last-minute tragedy where a little thing known as a cyclonic torpedo hits Iandon, <laughs> and whole ch- chunks of it are destroyed. Uh Everyone obviously in those sections is obliterated, and so are their soul stones. So they went oh, right to Slanesh. Feels bad. I can, I can just imagine some poor sod fighting in the front line. Say, like, "Yeah, we're winning, we're winning," and then it's just like, "Huh?" <laughs> oh, no. and just seeing it slowly moving, and then just, and then just Lord Farsi, oh. a second cyclonic torpedo is from the ground. Oh, no. <laughs> wow, that entire section got sauteed and served into a starting <laughs> meal. It was, Our craft world is now puree. Oh no. Yeah. Was not great. I obviously a craft world is very big. Like it is the size of a planet. So you need you need a couple of them to you know put them out of commission. But, but you don't want them to hit. Like one cyclonic torpedo torpe, torpedo torpedo is one too many. <laughs> uh so they're uh, kind of recovering from that mess. Then High Fleet Kraken shows up. Uh, half of it, the other half going to fight the Ultramarines, uh, of course, the greatest of us all. Uh, the other half went towards the Eldar, and while it's basically like the like the, the big come together moment where everyone, like all the Eldar craft world, starts sending troops to help Iandin out because Tyranids are a problem for everyone, not Could just Iandin. Run away, isn't like that wasn't. A they craft they worlds. Win. 
are well, one they were arrogant and thought they would they thought they were that guy just straight up <laughs> like Eldred warned them like no you don't want this you don't want any of this smoke you want to get out of here My and they all are not they and that because I'm him I'm yeah. always him <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh they weren't him <laughs> no they were they were the El I ended was not him that uh, one they, time <laughs> Eldred just kind of shrugged his shoulders like all right well good luck with that guys have fun <laughs> uh and you know, despite you know, early on their fleet held off the Tyranids, as you know with the Tyranids, there is always more Tyranids. Uh eight four fifths of the remaining craft world. <laughs> Yikes. Tough. Not not great. Uh in some ways, not as bad as you know, like the cyclonic torpedo thing, because you know the Tyranids don't for the usually don't care too much about soul stones, they just want the biomass, so they probably ate the soul stones as well, to be fair. Yeah, but you know, you could dig that out of their guts. They probably got digested. Mm. I let me Just live let, in my let us have this. Let me live in my <laughs> dis, like, delusion. It's not, it doesn't hurt you to let me uh, pretend that the soul am stones. Am I wrong though? Am I wrong? <laughs> All it specifically says is that a lot of Eldar got eaten. So I choose not, to not believe digested. that the soul stones were so there's, there's, there's a lot of ghosts now. Look, you know so. the digesting happens in the digestion pools after the fact. The Tyranids don't eat you on the spot. True. Yeah. True. So, <laughs> man, no, they were not eaten. I don't know. I just I feel like it would be like a gallstone or something if a Tyranid eats. Like, I'm like oh, it's, it's, not, yeah. it's not very comfortable. It's not going down easy. Oh, it hurts. Dude, you, you do not want to get the soul gem kidney stone. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Pushing one of those out is not a fun time. Literal <laughs> rock. <laughs> There's black yeah. soul gem. Oh, and then yeah, just like, you can just hear someone on the inside just like, let me out, let me out. Like, oh, watch that. Would you rather have a black soul gem or a greater soul gem? You know, the one that's a bit more spiky. <laughs> Do you mean Come on. The, gra like, the grand I'm soul gem? Is the yeah, grand so the grand bigger, one. Aren't they? I think, yeah, the grand is the one that you can also put people in. But I feel like the grand one is smoother. Even though it's larger, I think the so black I, soul gem is the smooth one, isn't it? I, well, they're kind of like smaller, but I think like deep purple. I don't black black soul gems. You can put anything in them, so they're more versatile. Yeah. Or you uh, put like the Eldar Azura souls. Star. You have, yo, digesting the Azura Star must be. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to eat any Daedric uh, okay. artifact. That's like <laughs> up there with eating like raw what, war no, star. Um, <laughs> what's the staff even... called? Um, of Shagorath. Uh, Jiggalag? No. No, that's the Jack. That's, well, yeah, Wabajack. Wabajack. Yeah, Jiggalag oh, is the anti oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know why. Just I'm the not deep throating the Wabajack. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's very upsetting. It just made me think of uh, a poor surgeon in Skyrim just being like, why have you put, been putting the soul gems up there? God, have you got nothing to Storage. do on a Saturday night? That's a bad idea. <laughs> it annoys you that the Wabajack doesn't work on... Um... A not, who's the dragon? Not Akatosh. Um, Alduin. Alduin. Why doesn't the Wobberjack work on Alduin? They 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 ruin like because well, surely he can't turn into a ch like turning into a chicken would be so cool. Well, lore wise, yeah, it's because he eats chicken. the world and he's the reason we're ruins Dagon's and evil things. So Shiagoras hand me downs aren't going to do anything to him. <laughs> Gameplay wise, it's because turning the final boss into a sweet <laughs> roll is a little bit anticlimactic. I mean, I can't even use it on General Tullius or. <laughs> it's, it's just such a waste, waste uh, opportunity. Just, you just turn him into a chicken, and he just comes up and like, "We can share a strawberry tart." And you're like, I love you. You're the best Daedric god. I love you. Ugh, so I'm, sidetracked. Sorry. <laughs> I am not coping with the elder. I'm not coping. Chat. <laughs> Small question: Is the Anton the one where like they interacted with humans? Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I was going to get to that once I was uh, done. I just, with I'll, the... so just make sure I not go into it before we. Oh yeah, no worry. Uh, so this is the yeah. bad, the ugly, and then there'll be the good next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> in some ways, not as bad because the soul stones were mostly intact. Uh, in others, far worse okay, because yeah. there was only twenty percent of the living left, and they were forced to put those soul stones into wraith constructs for their campaigns, which is the ghost robots I love so much. Cool models, very good. Uh, but it's. Like a step above grave robbing and necromancy, as far as the Eldar are concerned. Like the Infinity Circuit's whole thing is you've done your part. You can finally rest from this hellhole of a galaxy. And then you rip them back out and tell them to go to war, is basically what it is. So, but they just they just do not have the people to do anything else other than throw wraiths at uh, anything that bothers them. 
which to be fair, you know, throw Wraith Guard at anything, it'll probably swiftly resolve itself. They're quite strong. Uh, as for nowadays, with the Great Rift, they were under attack by Nurgle forces. Uh, Prince Uriel died and got... I, I'm pretty sure he was encased in snot. What? what? Yeah, it, Nurgle lore, I don't know, man. It's gross. <sighs> uh, thankfully, all those ghost robots meant that they wouldn't really get infected. Because even if they did, they're well, they're made out of wraith bone, which is magical conjured up material. So nothing really for Nurgle to infect. So they they decontaminated him, and then uh, the Inari brought him back to life. And speaking of the Inari, they're Iantin is like neutral in a way on the Inari, like tentatively supporting them. Although, unlike a lot of the other craft worlds, it's not that they dislike the Inari's whole thing. It's that they're already made of mostly of the dead. And if all of the dead go to join the god of the dead, they will no longer have enough craft world to make up a craft world. Uh, let alone like the few remaining living amongst the craft world. If they all leave, then they're just going to die out. So ungrateful. Right after Ben Solo get transferred his life essence into Ray and Broy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry, I mean Prince Yuri, yeah, sorry, excuse me. The great Uno reverse card of the century, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah. It really is the, the rise of the Skywalker. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm that, that's an unfair Come comparison. On. Sorry. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, in, in spite of reality teabagging them all of the time, uh, they're they're actually reasonably hopeful folk. Uh, you know, they like they like think they're these trials are them. You know, they've come through all of them on top, even if pretty severely beaten. Uh, you know, they're always looking to the galaxy with you know. A little bit of hope. Not a lot. This is 40k, but, you know, a little bit. And uh, they're some of the only Eldar to really have proper colonies, not just either sitting on a maiden world or cleaning up a maiden world of people who live on it and then leaving. They actually, like, we, we're not going to rebuild this empire if we don't get some people on the ground. So they do that. And, uh, like you were saying, how they're very diplomatic. Uh, they would, you know, they would regularly at one point just have inquisitors uh, housed by their families on Iandin, uh, and the, I, I believe I've brought this up before in the podcast. <laughs> the, the Eldar Witness Protection Program. Just position going, like, <laughs> we will make sure. No, we'll give you a new identity. And he's like, no, just put this hat on. They won't know you about your ears. You it's just not say you pointy. have a weird diet that makes you really <laughs> lean. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, but yeah, they were just like an inquisitor, just live on Iandin for a bit. Uh, like I said, I brought it up. The uh, the last Chancers Regiment, one of their members was in it because he just took an Eldar vehicle from Iandin for a joyride. Like they were on a <laughs> diplomatic trip, which implies a couple of things. Like for one, it's a regular and publicized enough occurrence that some random schmuck could just wander into an Eldar diplomatic meeting <laughs> while they're they're doing yeah. things and just like, steal the dude's car. <laughs> it's like a UN meeting for like world peace and all of a sudden there's this guy doing donuts in the front. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really what it was. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, but also that clearly there was enough level of trust that again, some random schmuck wasn't instantly gunned down by 500 aspect warriors guarding the diplomat that he could get to the point where he could just steal a car. So, my Andin, they seem to make friends, and it usually pays off, because the only reason they made it out of uh, High Fleet Kraken alive was because, like I said, pretty much every craft world sent them some measure of reinforcements. Uh, so, yeah, they're uh, diplomats, stoic, uh, in fact, they even get bonuses on the tabletop, like, to, to you know, kind of reinforce their just stoic resolve and the face of everything. Very, very cool dudes. Collect I Andin, buy Wraith units. Paint, painting yellow isn't that bad. <laughs> All Why is the slander? I just mean like a why picture. Wouldn't you they, know. Why wouldn't they want a cyclonic torpedo if they painted their craft world bright yellow? Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just asking for it. That's it's not my mind. Like, people who are like it's Imperial in Fist thing. fans and uh, Iron fans just like clasping together. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, <laughs> yellow's yellow. not that rip, bad. Rip Carl with us. Oh. <laughs> it's really not that bad. You just need contrast paints, honestly. White. Yeah. White is the real misery paint. White is yeah, hell. Yeah, it really is. You have to get airbrush, airbrush uh, brothers, and there's no problem. Yeah, I'll be doing my mentors soon, hopefully. So Ooh, I'll upgrade, your, upgrade your gear. You can get an airbrush on Amazon for like 70 quid. <laughs> there's so many paints Everything back there, though. <laughs> you use them. You can, you can still use them in the airbrush. You just like plop it in. Yeah, you, you, have dilute, you just dilute them down. Oh, mm -hmm. shit. I didn't know. Yeah, don't need, nice. don't need any paints. <laughs> 
it's mm-hmm. it's kind of a pain to clean because you have to clean it every time you want to change color. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's still nice. It's really good. I mean, you kind of need to do that with a brush too. It's just that's just you know dip dip dip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's you know basics of Iandin. You know, I'll probably ask this after every craft world. Any any questions? Any queries about good old good old Iandin? I have one which is about how um, it's their color scheme, just in general of Eldar craft worlds. Why yes. is it so bright? <laughs> so bright. Because <laughs> it looks cool. I don't know why are space marine. Why is space marine armor so bright? Look at the Alpha Legion. Look at the Thousand mm. Suns. Oh. But I think back to like even in the early editions when they were doing all the artwork. Like, even right. then, like all the of forty k was bright at that point. <laughs> yeah. Never even the yeah, like the El- giant pink, white, like yellow titans. Just like hello guys. The Eldar yeah, seem to like avoid everything. the grim dark aesthetic though quite heavily they're almost like I mean, in some regards they precede the grim dark to an extent i mean yes mm-hmm. there's the war in heaven but then there was like a long period of just like we're having fun oh no as much as i hate to drugs. this would be a weird thing to bring up uh was it dawn of war dawn of war 3 trailer F. do you know the howling banshees <laughs> and that and they made or even yeah. um yeah. Or the like death the... Of, yeah like the, the the guy who did the death of hope animation and he put a howling yeah. ba- there's a howling banshee in there and that one looks like ancient bone and so I thought like oh man like it looks like ancient bone armor. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I always it, thought that'd be way cooler for the general aesthetic of the Eldar, where it's like it literally looks like ancient armor rather than Power Rangers go go go. Personally, I love the go go Power Rangers <laughs> armor. Yeah, Me I do too. have um, I do have a question not not about this particular, but is is it Shamhain that has the bright red and they go fast? Yes. Yeah, baby. Is that where the orcs get it from? It no, might. Like, Reddings go faster because <laughs> of them. Uh, I don't know. Surely. I don't think they've ever confirmed it, but you know, orc culture is stealing things from other cultures. You know, no reason that they didn't it's look like at the British. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no reason. You I'm can't, allowed to you say know, that. Imagine. Say, yeah, yeah. We love tea so much, even though we stole it from China. Like, yeah, it's our thing now. It's like, hang on. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, no reason. You know, you can't assume that's where the orcs got it from. Simon goes quite fast. Yeah, and is I there like any purple ones? The war and having to, like, they're quite fast. Uh, I believe there's fast. yeah, there's purple ones. I think Mimara. No, Mimara's like Aqua. Uh, what was the purple one? I just wanted to the stealthy ones. Then the there's, orcs there's really like, I think Alton like... Sar. Yeah, Alton Sar is like uh... maroon purple. Hmm. There's like there's... maybe ten side craft worlds and yet they all have less lore than like 300 successor chapters but what they have less lore than the successor chapter that has no chapter badge and one paragraph it's like yeah, yeah literally less than that <laughs> the, the the average eldar craft world has less lore than the fucking genesis chapter <laughs> <laughs> oh pay oh pay yeah yes <laughs> No, that's my like just general question, but I don't have anything specific to I and though, because I think yeah. I do wish they get more Prince Uriel stuff, just because he's. God, I wish he gets the cool or a new one. Cool. He's so cool. make him plastic. His model's not that bad, but it's resin. <laughs> uh, oh, pain. Uh, no, but, uh, that's my question. That's all good. Yeah. All right, with that, uh, Biltan, Eli, you wanna you wanna do some. Yeah, baby. Some Biltan lore. I feel like you've, you've been waiting for it. Take it away. Yeah, Biltan is probably my favorite. Them or same hand, but Biltan is pretty awesome. You know the Navy SEALs copy pasta? <laughs> do, you, do you, do Andy and Hal, do you know that? I, 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 oh, I've wow. I don't think so. I don't think All right, well, I'll send it in the, I'll, I'll throw it in the <laughs> so, Discord and I can guarantee. Oh, Lord above. <laughs> it's the, let's this... see if I can find it. I, I found I it. Might be able to share it on the uh, on the stream as well if I can see it. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that in general, anyways. I enjoy reading. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This one for Chad is the. Uh... <laughs> Oh, uh, you yeah. know, I graduated top of my class in Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in numerous secret raids in Al-Qaeda, oh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Biltan oh, yeah. is essentially the Navy SEALs copy pasta guy, except every word in the copy pasta is actually true. And it's uh, if you gave like you know the, I don't know what it would be like the European equivalent, but like the reserves kid, the ROTC kid in school who posts like return to tradition edits. Uh, if you gave that guy. <laughs> 500 years of military training and sci-fi guns and then had him read industrial society and his future <laughs> and that's your average dude from peel to hand pretty much wow so 
if you uh they're the kind of guys who would get in an argument with the Imperials on who's more racist, <laughs> and they would <laughs> they would uh, vehemently try to win that one. So, yeah, he, so you're telling me these are like in shape redditors? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, me, maybe like the opposite of your average redditor. Maybe like in shape four channers, I guess. <laughs> let, me, let me let me put it this way: you know, like the Death Watch and their rabid hatred of Xenos comes from intense levels of indoctrination and brainwashing to get them to just despise Xenos. Yeah. That is the default state of BLT. <laughs> the least yeah. racist member of BLT. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you're a Xenos hater, then you'll probably appreciate BLT. They kind of remind me of the Necrons. Uh, they have a similar kind of goal as the Necrons as well, as they want to you know see the extinction and eradication of every other species in the galaxy that isn't the Eldar. Essentially, their whole thing is they want to return to the glory days of the Eldar, and they're very optimistic people so they've been staging a lot of like assaults and retaking of maiden worlds and they as they think the maiden worlds will be the staging point for the uh, return of the eldar which they think is going to happen any day now guys it'll happen any day i swear we'll stop losing any day now so they're working really hard they're all about military and tradition so naturally they have the most aspect warriors uh, out of anyone else as it's actually a coming of age ritual to walk the path of the warrior they also have the most exarchs and uh, the Exarchs, because mo most craft worlds, the Seer Council is the highest place in government. But for Bealtan, it's also shared with the Council of Exarchs called the Court of the Young King, who uh, they generally elect a young king who will then be sacrificed, of course, to summon the Avatar of Cain. So if you like the Avatar of Cain on the tabletop, Bealtan's not a bad way to, glow, to go. Let's see. I, like we said, they worked with the Anon after the fall, and they wrecked some chaos but then they stopped being friends sadly they have definitely the coolest armies with the most fancy tech of all the eldar for the most part uh, their whole thing is the sword win which is uh baz akane baz akane i believe is how you pronounce it uh the whole idea is like one swift strike uh complete and utter obliteration and like the blink of an eye type of thing so they have lots of wave serpents and falcons and they just zoom up and they kill you pretty much they're in ninth edition they're like tabletop rules was i think you got to reroll a wound and you would battle focus on a three or more you could never roll a one or a two so that was nice they're just fast guys one of the cooler things in their armory uh one of the engines of all so super heavies is a monofilament like giant cannon tank thing uh and the cannon has bacteria and wraithbone parasites in it that will just eat and destroy anything it touches basically they use it to cleanse the worlds but all the other eldar kind of hate them for that because it was originally made to like more like terraform and do nice things and make life but they're using it to destroy life so you know it's, it's also a walking war crime yeah <laughs> jesus but to be fair real good at getting rid of orcs and tyranids all those spores yeah, yeah. hard to have a geneva uh, convention when geneva was wiped off the map <laughs> in, their, in their sort of uh, life. Andy's leaving on his favorite Eldar. How could he do such a thing? It's all right. Favorite uh, Eldar? <laughs> That's a good one. And Andy's favorite well, Eldar is a dead one. <laughs> yeah, fair. Exactly. The only good Eldar is a... Oh, the crawls out of their called, yeah. stinking craft world. <laughs> we don't like your kind around here, boy. Oh, um, what was it again? Oh, yeah, the... Speaking of Andy, I guess the Imperium doesn't like the Bealtan, obviously, but at the same time, Bealtan does just as good of a job as killing all the other Xenos races as they do killing humans, so it's like kind of, they're kind of useful, even though they, you know, are kind of scary at the same time. If you're a um, colony on a maiden world, and, you know, it doesn't matter, maybe you've lived there for like 20,000 years, uh, but Bealtan sees that as the blink of an eye obviously and they're going to wipe you off the face of the planet every man woman and child of course because you know you're human being you're freaking inferior <laughs> vermin to them so they get out of here they do make the offer to take people away but you know <laughs> it's not legit <laughs> i don't think they're gonna be, no they will do it but you know, I don't think they're going to be heartbroken if you say no. Then they're going to go, "All right, we were hoping you would say." Yeah, no. yeah very much. Rolls up sleeves. <laughs> they uh, they have allied 
with Imperials from time to times, especially to fight like orcs because they hate orcs more than all the other Xenos, which I think is kind of a feeling shared by most people who hate everyone in the galaxy. Uh, but oftentimes they'll fight beside you, and then once the orcs are dead, they'll turn around and just kill you afterwards as well. But I know, <laughs> thanks, thanks I, for the help. <laughs> yeah, I know that there was a time. At least I haven't read the book, but I hear about it everywhere. Is that they allied with uh, some Talon Desert Razors once? I think. Yeah, it was uh, actually there, went well. There was something with like a chaos artifact on Talarn that uh, you know, they saw that Talarn, you know, like they helped him secure it, and Talarn's pretty good at keeping Talarn chaos free, uh, as evidenced mm-hmm. by them clowning on the Iron Warriors. <laughs> Common Pergarabo L, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Uh, they're like, yeah, you guys, you know, here's we're gonna lock this in a box for you, keep it safe. And the mm-hmm. Desert Raiders are like, we'll do. Hey, Eli, if your wife became a Beale Town Eldar warrior, what would I do? I don't know, bro. What, what, what cool. would I do? He'd be dead, <laughs> <laughs> he'd get genocided. <laughs> that'd, that'd, be, that'd be nice, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but <laughs> what was I even down talking about? Because uh, it's like seven foot tall, yeah, Jesus. Oh, um, they do take the occasional W, though. I think out of all the Eldar, Beeltan takes a lot of dubs, which is nice. It's something. Um, they have their little, uh, like, it's like a Hall of Heroes type of place where they categorize all of the spirit stones of people who died in battle, and they categorize them by what battle they died in. And they often go to those guys for advice on stuff. Kind of neat. Let me see. They are... Oh, I would say there was like a, I, th- I don't remember what it's from, but like they, they beat 10 Space Marine chapters and like two whole Segmentum fleets once. Yeah. yeah. Very Hell nice. Yeah. They, there is a little story where they outsmart the Raven Guard and kill all of them too, which is pretty cool. So, you know, they have all the, if you want Eldar that, you know, don't lose all the time, then, <laughs> then, win. then yeah, Beale's hand's pretty good. I think, I mean, the other guys, yeah, they they're not mentioned enough to win enough, I guess. Like LA Talk just got bodied the uh, in lore last I checked, so well, whatever. Um, they oh, a great are point though. With that is anyone ever sad when a Raven Guard dies? No. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, I never ever felt sad about a Raven Guard dying. You just hear people going. <laughs> the real never question, more. Hal, is if a tree is around in the forest, or if a tree falls in the forest, no yeah. one's around to hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does exactly. Does anyone write a Raven Guard book? <laughs> if there's a book that's been written and no one's allowed to read it, does it exist? No. <laughs> I just couldn't see any space reason the entire book. It's just oh, yeah. the Raven Guard are so good at hiding, I can't even find their lore. Where is it? <laughs> Poor guys, they're still space marines, though, so they still take more dubs than uh, yeah, the average. Fully and fleshed... strike is pretty Raven Dodd do clan on Tau, they get clan yeah, they on did. by Tau. Yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> for the greater good. <laughs> oh, but back in the day, and still nowadays, but not so much because you know they got blown up. But they would follow this kind of like warden's path throughout the galaxy, and they would retake maiden worlds and cleanse the places of all the vermin, so that you know for the rise of the Eldar, they were kind of like uh, Anarchy of the Traveler types. You know, he goes around and goes to Tomb Worlds and gets rid of all the colonists and reawakens his people and stuff. They're very, very similar to that, in my opinion. Uh, during the 13th Black Crusade, or at least around it, the Battle of Beeltan occurred. Scarbrand punched a hole in the webway, or not the webway, like the warp or whatever, and the mask <clears> jumped out. And she went into the center of Beeltan somehow. I didn't read... Uh, the freaking supplement codex or whatever back then. I'm pretty then. sure it's part of the Inari books, so. Yeah, also, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, you couldn't pay me enough to read those things, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, but the mask, the mask went into the world, and she corrupted the spirit circuit with Slanesh demons, which is, like, the most horrific thing you could imagine if you're the poor spirits in there. Um, so the defenses and the Wraithbone were very hard-pressed and kind of already breaking, but then uh, the Inari showed up, with uh Yvrain. Yvrain kind of helped them out she went to the world spirit uh center took out the crone sword and summons the incarn which then was too much for biltan to handle and it got blown into a bunch of pieces uh, but it didn't kill them all which is nice they took a long time to regrow obviously but 
of all the craft worlds, they're the most optimistic and they still took the victory for what it was. And they kind of unified quickly and got back at it. So their craft world is more like a fleet now than an actual craft world. It's just a bunch of pieces flying together. Didn't when they you know I did that, didn't they consume a huge amount of the infinity circuits like undead? Or the, yes, that dead. also happened. So they were probably like, Thank you for saving us. You ate my grandmother, my <laughs> grandfather, my mum. Yeah. And you you turned you turned, you turned my mum into a weapon. <laughs> and you would have got dad too, but Slanesh got him first. Yeah, seriously. That's a great sentence, Hal. You turned my mum into a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean literally. <clears throat> Oh, so yeah, she was. She said, "Here, I'll save you," and then blew up the craft world. But she did save them in the end, I guess. So you know, whatever it yeah. worked. That's it the works. Mask of Slanesh, I think, just for, clar- for clarification, with the demon. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, showed yeah. up and goofed on them a little bit. It was when the mask and Scarbrand were fighting together. This, this was like, I don't want to admit this, but this was like five or six or seven years ago. I'm pretty sure that this oh. one came out. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the rise of Gilliman, isn't it? Oh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yep. The Yanari was going on at the same time. That is somehow almost old lore at this point, which is Gilliman's insane. Gilliman's been back for a hot minute, guys. He's been back. For yeah, a I know. I and I haven't even. I'm still. I'm. I must be like twenty years behind at this point because I haven't even gotten to those books at this point. Se- in time. Seven years, <laughs> Gilliman's been back in the Imperium. That's insane. Well, no, that's like, back most, in real life. I feel like the book series that gets most brushed over is the Psychic Awakening stuff. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. that exists. Yeah, you can't, you can't buy the books. They're not actual books. They're a supplement. Codex well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. But the well, even beyond that, all the cool events stuff, like but... usually Codex events still are worth something. But leave like Psychic Awakening, you feel the the, re- the reaction everyone had to that was yeah, that sure was a thing. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> they did it too it... quickly, yeah. I think oh. they. I mean, they had a, mm. They've made a Fall of Cadia book now, like yeah. an actual Fall of Cadia book, and everyone said it was mm. really, really good. But then there's still no. How do I think? Pe- People often be like, well, how did the Primark come back? Oh, he's in this supplement thing that you can't buy anymore. The Ooh. Gathering Storm. Oh, yeah. You can't when, buy it. When when did the Psychic Awakening happen again? Was that like 2019, 2020? 2017, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. my oh, well, in that case, the previous major <laughs> event they did in their settings was the End Times. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> so They yeah, were I probably so, a little bit yeah. cautious with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Your previous really setting like shaking event. Ideas, oh, it's just there's no man. good platform for the whole. Like, there's a bunch of interesting, like, coinciding stories. It's like, oh, the Great Rift, all the psych, and the Elder. Like, oh, more psychers. That's weird. Ugh. Many books. Mm. Not really. No. <laughs> the law where Belisarius Call meets Trazen is in the Gathering mm. Storm supplement. Again, you can't buy it. And I managed to find a copy of it from like someone I know. So like I would get that excerpt when I did like a old um, Trazen and Oregon video. But I was like, how the hell is anyone going to find the interact other other than the game, the actual mm-hmm. like Battlefield Gothic game? There's no like actual way to find the interaction. I was so, yeah, and with, with that one, you didn't even need, you didn't even need to buy the supplement in the first place. You could just watch the cutscene from Battlefield yeah. Gothic. <laughs> yeah, and some of Battlefield Gothic isn't canon because Spire kills Abaddon. You're like, oh my, <laughs> it's <laughs> canon in my heart. I mean, yeah. thank God that game exists great. just for the cutscene, so. Mm-hmm. But the four really was good in that. That was uh, what's his? That was Valorax like claim to fame, just reposting the cutscenes. Pretty much, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, like the most viewed videos are just the cutscenes. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, DJ B said, Eli, what would you do if your wife was a Wraith Knight? Which I think is pretty funny. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, 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 the night sized <laughs> Titan construct. <laughs> Climb on in. Yep. Pilot seat. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, DJ Beast, unless unless his wife has a twin, she can't be a Wraith Knight. Oh, yeah, Aww. true. <laughs> oh, we have a donation from Incoming Backup, a classic fella. Thank you. I am returned once more from the army to remind thee of the existence of Boingob. Boing- he forever <laughs> remain crispy and delicious. I'll see you guys rock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He would be a Praise pretty God. delicious roast. Praise the real question is, if Boingob could consume a craft world, which one? <laughs> like, how All big of them. is his gob? Yeah, true. Such is his might. <laughs> I just might of Boingob, the father band. of all squigs, for people who would oh, understand. Man. I just yeah, want a new I... orc warband that praises Boingob Boing, Boing mm. and has all their iconography about him and rides squigs into battle. That's all I want. <laughs> That'll be on our merchandise when we get around to it. True. <laughs> <laughs> I, re- I read yes. some leaks. That's how they're going to, when the Emperor finally dies on the Golden Throne, that's how they're going to... Plug the demon hole and have Boingob eat it. 
yeah. Well, yeah. he well, rides into battle. Into cast the Astronomicon, Boingub's like. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the real Tyranid I find. <laughs> Exactly. Well, well that, uh, that's that's all I have on Beal Um There's probably there's probably more, but uh, see, I have not read every Eldar book. So just a couple things. Uh, like you said, they got they got back pretty quickly after Bealtan itself. Like the main thing, you know, kind of blew up. Uh, they they proceeded to learn no amount of humility, <laughs> and if anything, even though their numbers were reduced because they either died and were eaten by Slamesh or taken by the Inari, uh, it just made them focus more on like smaller surgical strikes, and they've only gotten better at it, especially because now they're not just one craft world. They can take a whole fleet and go anywhere with it. So now they're even more obnoxious if you're an <laughs> Imperial commander, and suddenly this dude is telling you to evacuate the planet now. So they're not uh, like the Death Star, they're like the Rebel fleet now. Yeah, except the Rebel yeah, fleet yes. if it was like not Episode Nine. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, it's uh, everyone. Oh my god, <laughs> you, they're just regular people. <laughs> feel feel free to blow your load now, guys. Look, it's all of these cool ships. Oh man, uh, yeah, uh, so silly. They they've got a pretty close relations with the Exodites because they mm -hmm. are so upset def defending Maiden Worlds uh, that oftentimes Exodites will like fill in their ranks uh, to kind of make sure Bealtan, if they're you know short a couple Eldar, uh, they'll give you a hand. Uh, they uh, and they're basically the only Eldar you could hope that could hope to wage something like a conventional war. They obviously, you know, they prefer the sword wind, or sword wind, and the sudden strikes. But if need be, they could, you know, like build fortifications, hold down, bunker down, that sort of thing. They, you know, prefer not to because it's just not how the Eldar wage war. But given their numbers and everything, they're the only ones that probably could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say they fight a lot less uh, conservative than the rest of the Eldar do. Yeah, they're, all, they're a lot less scared of dying. Dying in battle is uh, how they the best way to die, in their opinion. Yeah. Uh, did I? Let's see. Uh, yeah, not the biggest fans of the Inari. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, can't recent, blame them. <laughs> recent yeah. events included. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's, I believe that's Bailton. Uh, yeah. Uh, cool. Now, next we got a. I mean, actually, I'm going to go out of order. I had it. I don't want to get Ally Talk out of the way. They're not, they're not fun. I do <laughs> Five not minutes. Care, <laughs> do not care for Ally Talk. Uh, despite being blue. one of the, the. They're blue and yellow instead of yellow and blue like I am. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, they're totally different things, guys. I swear. Indeed. They've done it in the wrong order. They uh they are the strictest of all the Eldar craft worlds with the pass system and discipline. Or pet and uh they're they are all about it. And arrogant to the point that it makes most of the other Eldar that have to interact <laughs> with them tell them to <laughs> shut up. Uh and uh yeah, it's like also like they're so strict to the point that most of the Eldar who are bored on Ally Talk will want to leave Ally Talk because <laughs> it's so like strict and repressive with how close you need to follow the caste system. Uh, which means, short of basically people like the Harlequins or certain like really high up Inquisitors, they have the best like scouts and information gathering network in the galaxy. Uh, they've got rangers across uh, the all of the galaxy, feeding them information. They've got tons of Corsairs harassing fleets that might come to uh, harm the craft world. Because they all do still, you know, Ali Talk is their home, but for the love of God, it's like they do not want to be home for longer than they have to be. So they've uh, they've got a lot of people out there, which on the plus side, again, you know, they've got, they've got like these, probably the best warning systems in the galaxy with all the information they get. Uh, on the downside, very small army because everyone born in the craft world thinks it's boring in hell is just <laughs> and just stuffy and suffocating. So when they when they fight, especially against the Imperium, usually does not go super hot, which is another one of those things where I'm going to deliver you pure unfiltered copium on <laughs> this. Uh, and you know, in the in the magical background lore. Of things but where you know it's like where the it calls the tiered it's the greatest threat, and then we see ten unbroken tiered defeats in a row. 
they theoretically have a pretty decent record against other factions in the galaxy uh, because they've you know, they're all Rangers and Corsairs. It's Imperial commanders out of all the Eldar. Like the, it's like fighting ally talk is like fighting ghosts. Uh, they're there one minute, and then your commander has a hole in his head, and then they're gone. On the other hand, in the actual lore events we get, it is ally talk getting beat the hell up <laughs> by everyone and shoved into a locker for being big stupid nerds. Uh, there was a what was that? What was it? There was one event where a pretty small amount of you know space marine guardsmen and like the mechanicus, like it was a lot of like different factions of the Imperium involved, but relatively speaking, not that many of them just kind of show up and just start smashing the craft world to bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it just sucks. To, <laughs> it just, just sucks to be Ally <laughs> Talk. If you play Ally Talk, I'm so, I don't know how. I'm so I think sorry. they're cool. It, it's, it's, more, uh, it's very reminiscent of the whole Dark Eldar. Like the whole of Comorob basically got screwed by one Salamander ship or something. Yeah, because because the Eldar are not allowed to win. Because they cause they get it's like one salamander ship, which has like probably less than a hundred space marines in it, and all of Comra was like, "This is a problem. We can't deal with this." You know, what I mean, space marines in their corridors. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. they also got ganged up on by all of the Necron characters. I think that was a late talk, which is unfortunate. I think it's worth saying that they are the the army that they do have is really good though because they're so like into the paths that they're very perfectionist. So they have some of the best aspect <coughs> warriors, I feel like. So yeah, and for what it's worth, like that battle I was talking about, like the Eldar to Imperium death ratio is like one to a thousand or some shit like that. <laughs> it's just the Eldar do not do wars of attrition. They lose those pretty pretty hard, and the Imperium. It could be one to a million, and they would consider it a resounding win. Mm -hmm. A comment by um, Engineer of all, he says, uh, Alatox saved the Crimson Fists from extinction, though. Traitor's Gorge in Rin's world. You've got to give oh, yeah, I remember that, actually. That. Mm -hmm. That's a little, Thank that's like Codex that. story. And they were all, even. like, ominous, and they were like, Ah, but we'll get you next time. Like, oh, <laughs> why? Leave yeah, my fair. boys alone. Pedro's nice. Vote for Pedro. <laughs> they, have a great, they have a great fleet. As well, that's a thing. Yeah, they're yeah, like I said, like part of the like the corsairs and the uh like just their you know fleet this craft world feels very like, good. It, this feels like the energy of it sure is a craft world. <laughs> <laughs> it's cooler when you read it in the codex and you got all the pretty pictures and stuff. I swear. It's it's definitely a craft world. <laughs> Dude, undoubtedly <laughs> that craft world is there. <laughs> <laughs> and Illich Knight's uh, engineer of all says it's uh, true. The, 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 oh, sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. Uh, the, the path of the Eldar series is about Eldar from Craft or Lila Talk. So, hey, one of like two Eldar focused books in existence is, uh, is all about <laughs> them. They're yeah, one or two, but probably a solid 50% of them. <laughs> <laughs> the cope, the coping of like, just please more Eldar level, please. <laughs> I will also say I have uh, built in uh, uncharitable feelings about them because when I was first getting the Warhammer, I was like, damn, I like Iandan a lot, but I keep confusing them and Ally Talk's color scheme. <laughs> uh, so when I was first Probably looking, they at betrayed you. In so I was like, yeah, so I was like, Ally Talk, they're the blue and yellow. I, I've heard yellow is a nightmare to paint. I only have to paint a little bit of yellow. And then I found out, no, I actually had to paint almost entirely yellow, and I blame Ally Talk for that. <laughs> Bastards. Uh, but that's uh, unfortunately not a canon reason for to dislike them. That's just me being an idiot. So we'll, we'll probably have something we don't like in Warhammer. That we don't have a legitimately good reason to <laughs> yeah. not dislike. Probably. I think, Colin, you you rap on the uh, Alpha Legion. <laughs> I fully like, consider that a legitimate reason. No, I, okay. <laughs> you're not gonna. You're not gonna what, get me on your, this. What's one. your legitimate grievance with them? I I don't think their mysteries are good mysteries. I think it all ends in. But maybe we were lying to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they should have had one author do all of their books and kept it at that. I like, think it does make sense though. Like, imagine if I ended this podcast. Those. I was just gonna say, with, with one author doing all the books, you do have things like the Salamander's Horus Heresy book. So it's a, nah, it can be a bad thing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, imagine, Hal, if I ended this podcast, and the last thing I told everyone was, <laughs> actually, maybe I just lied to you about every single <laughs> thing I just said. That's an Alpha Legion book. Oh, good. Thanks. I'm you know glad what? I, at least I that wasted would make it, my time. At least that would give it a, a place where they could make more of it. You know what I mean? You <laughs> can already make more of it. There are five million right. craft worlds that have two <laughs> pages of lore. It. Tops. Oh, the Alpha okay. Legion is to give you five million pages and then go, yeah, but like we lie. What if What if not true? What if uh, unreal? Yeah. Engine Legion 5. Is a good book. Legion what's is your, a great Eli, what's your uh, hot take, though? Or what's the thing you don't? Like I, don't know. Do. I thousand suns i guess but i do I, I don't like hate them i just don't think they're that cool and death guard death guard and thousand suns i'm not, not a big fan i don't hate them i think everything in warhammer is cool but like especially the new age like death guard look i just don't like it i think they look silly and cartoony you look 40 40k thousand suns is nothing compared to 30k thousand suns you, you you ask me my irrational hatred like I don't maul every time corn is brought up for no other reason than my first Warhammer game and got bodied by him on the tabletop. I got world I, eatered. Uh, I just I dislike Vulcan. That's Sheesh. gonna get any hate from people though. It's yeah. just because Vulcan's whole thing is like he's kind of nice, and then there's like there's there's no depth to him really. They're really like the dude is a yeah. puddle. In, like in terms of like I, I i like that like little mo my favorite part about vulcan is the fact that him hugging dawn and dawn being uncomfortable with it because mm-hmm. that shows more about rogue or dawn being like yeah sure come in but like, you know awkwardly it's, tapping him on the shoulder it's a very aesthetic puddle you would see in like a nice art painting but it is yeah. a puddle <laughs> i like salamanders though because they have yeah. but vulcan again is just there's, there's no <laughs> thank you andy i they just don't that you know what? You know what? I was I need to rant about. This. I was like a massive size panel, but I, the problem with Vulcan is he doesn't have like a thing in his legion where like there's a fatal flaw. Like the Raven Guard, even though they have barely any law, they have one which is basically like some of their um, marines get super depressed. They do have a fatal flaw. It's called the Horus Heresy book series. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, true. It's uh, called Istvan. But everyone's got mm. like even Gilliman's like legion had like oh they had a group which is like they're a bit too. You know, these are a bit too crazy, these guys. And we only use them as like, yeah. Mm. Vol- like, all the salamanders are like, we are all noble at heart. There's not one of them that's like, yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of liked I it think, when he killed that Eldar child. I think <laughs> you know? the flaw is that they're so willing to just like martyr themselves. It's like, guys, could you not just throw yourselves in front of these civilians every charge you get? We are losing a lot of men. <laughs> they oh, weren't the, even in danger. They the were like salamander, a few meters away. <laughs> the Vulcan Primarch book is him hammering on the forge for 10 hours going, can I go into battle yet, father? <laughs> no, not yet. Oh, can I? And at the very end he goes, yes. And that's the <laughs> entire book. The, Vul- oh, the, Val- the poor, I this is bad. The poor salamanders <laughs> and like Vulcan have no like struggle. It's yeah. oh, so annoying. Sorry, we're here to talk about Eldar, and then to be fair, he did he did murk an Eldar child, so that he did do that. That was the that was the best part. They should have explored that more. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. The fact that a a guy like that, he was meant to be so kind and nice, could falter so horribly. Could just torture child. Isn't that his most interesting part? If he had not, if there was no Vulcan child moment, would you even? You know what I mean? Like, is he even interested? It's all people ever talk about when they mention him, to be fair. Exactly. <laughs> he's, got, yeah, he, he's nice and he burned a kid. <laughs> yeah. Gave him, oh. gave him the old Iwo Jima. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, he's, it's like the, uh, be so nice like, to 1,000 kids and nobody bats an eye. Burn one child and all of a sudden <laughs> you're the child burner. <laughs> Poor oh. Vulcan. Oh, that reminds me of the whole, like, you know, you know, listen, if I play one football game a year, am I a footballer? Like, no. Okay, okay. So if I sleep with one dude, I mean, you call me gay. Like, you fuck one goat. <laughs> and suddenly everyone's oh, all man. judgmental. Uh, Andy, I would just like to say you made another mistake with the poll because you're implying anyone's a fan of the end times. Yeah. True. There's got to be at least for? a couple of them, surely. I, it's not that bad. I refuse to believe that human being exists. <laughs> so your puts, said, uh, damn it, that child was 100 years old, maybe, kind of. It's possible a lot younger, maybe 50, maybe older, yeah. maybe younger. <laughs> oh, actually, no, I remember. I remember having a comments in one of my old YouTube videos of somebody, like, <clears throat> vehemently defending the end time, saying it was beautiful lore and it was, like, perfect and amazing. It's like, oh, my gosh. 
Mm. I wonder if that guy's doing okay. <laughs> Rarest had to say Hell's oh, Reach showed the salamander's flaw. They refused to risk civilians by going on the offensive, causing more long or causing long term death. <clears throat> I don't think that Is was that their a flaw, flaw. That they're nice. <laughs> that that wasn't their flaw. That was meant to show the flaw of the Black Templars. But the Black Templars were willing to sacrifice. They don't. They were willing to like possibly let all the civilians die just to s kill one orc leader. Mm. Whereas the Salam yeah. it didn't necessarily. To be fair, it's, it's a good point to be fair, but I don't, that's not like the Salamander's fatal flaw. That was the Black Templars are the exception to the rule. You know, not every Space Marine Legion would do what the Black Templars did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh... Next craft one, I think. I, was, I, yes, I, I think I think we're done with Ali talk. Uh, <laughs> Eli, I hope that guy from your channel has testicular torsion. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, does that say? Uh, oh, the end times the guy. Vulcan Thank you, Andy, for the drawings. <laughs> it says Vulcan lives in brackets. She doesn't. No. Oh. <laughs> Poor Eldar child. <laughs> well, Caleb Collins here with a slander. He says Colin has admitted to finding the end times sounding cool when he first read it. Yeah, because I didn't know what Warhammer was yet. Yeah, I was I was 14 when it happened, and I thought it was cool. But then they got rid of the cool army that I just made, and so I didn't find it so cool anymore. <laughs> Malekith, where are you? <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, next one, Saim Han. Uh, <clears throat> You can uh you can safely assume going forward that you know these elder are all a little bit more loose with the whole you know unending discipline shtick that the rest of them are all about. Uh, like Bieltan, this is the other major craft role that is not ruled by its seer council. Uh, instead, they have a clan-based society, and the clan chieftains all cast a vote on major matters of the craft world. Uh, the seer council they they have does have one vote, and obviously any chieftains, you know, if they want advice or some future seeing done, they, they're feel they, they're free to go ask the seer council for some advice and guidance. But in terms of like practical influence, seer council on Simhan is not nearly as influential as it is on the other craft worlds. <clears throat> uh, they're not. I see, you know, I said they're, you know, not as, you know, strict as the Elder Eldar. They're not the Dark Eldar. They're not, you know, complete degenerates. They're not evil and ruining everything. They're they're more laid back, is how I like to think about it. They're uh, they're content to just go with the flow. Uh, they don't, you know, they don't fall into vice like the former Eldar. They do still have the path system, and they are still, you know, determined to not fall back into what the rest of their race did. But they're, you know, also not limiting themselves from, you know, the the little, the you know, the little joys of life, uh, life like the rest of the elder are. <clears throat> uh, this does cause some level of distrust from the other Eldar who see them as barbarians. But you know, it means that I, at least I would argue, they probably have the most pleasant life out of any of the craft worlds. If you had to pick one to live on, Simon would probably be a good bet. Uh, I'd also like to apologize to Dredanon, who taught us how to say all of these words properly, and I don't remember <laughs> them. Uh, that's my bad. Although he's pretty chill about it. I mean, I did mention, like, I sent him a message while going, I'm going to reference one of them in a video. How do you pronounce it? He's like, you can pronounce them however you like. It's your video. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's very chill with it. He's very nice. I just remember because we, <laughs> we had a body told us, and I was like, fuck, I can't remember. <laughs> 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 that sounds really cool. I wish I could remember any of the inflections, or even how it was spelled, or how it sounded. I don't know. It's just magical. Oh, well, I can words. remember how it's spelled. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not illiterate. Well, like, phonetically, how it's spelled. Ah, uh, fair enough. Uh, they will settle any issues or disputes amongst each other with uh, with a duel to first blood, which. Usually doesn't result in death, but it's not necessarily an unexpected thing if someone dies and they just, uh, they're not happy when that happens, but they're like, hey, it's a valid way to win the duel, first blood. If you cut a guy's head off, you did get first blood, presumably. So, you know, it, it does happen. Uh, uh, yeah, and they're, uh, one of their biggest thing is clan honor. Uh, the reason they have all these clans is that before... The paths were implemented, but after, you know, Slanesh slaneshed all over the galaxy and the Eldar in particular, they uh, decided they would, in, like, restructure the society based around clans in order to, like, focus people's energies on something other than rampant hedonism. So that has kind of ended up with 
like clan honor being the end all be all uh but not lame like over in battle tech fuck the clans i was just trying uh, to find something because dread non commented on a post <clears> of mine <throat> not long ago asking about um <clears throat> questions you want to ask about warhammer law and he said um what's angron's problem slash question mark question mark question mark and i just <laughs> and i remember that my reply was inflation <laughs> so, so I just remember that mm. reference there. He, 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 commented on my, he commented on my last community post because all he said was return the slab. Fucking cursed. We need him back on for the tier list or something. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, with their whole you know obsession about honor and everything, it's usually honor amongst the clans, which is kind of result of them being pretty isolated about galactic uh, affairs at large they'd instead rather duel each other just stick to their own thing enjoy life or you know race each other go fast not really concerning themselves with the rest of reality if they can help it uh which is why their insular nature and laid-back latitude or at attitude good lord <laughs> uh it does kind of let me let them get along a little bit better with you know the imperium and other races across the galaxy uh, not no, not much better. They're not Iand and actively going out of the way use diplomacy, but they're also not BL Tan, who see you have moved next door and are going to glass the neighborhood because of it. Damn. Uh, they you know they just they do their thing. Uh, the they're actually a decent bit of lore about them because between uh, they were both on Vigilus and if you remember that uh, Eldritch Omens box, it was them versus the Chaos. Uh, and like the Hell Drake, the New Ra Rangers, yeah. actually. Decent bit of recent lore, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. uh, Great Rift and Yunari, when that came around... Uh, oh, pardon me, I skipped a bit. Uh, Simon also fully returns uh, the like little bit of mistrust that the other Eldar have for them, just because they think they're all boring and stuffy and need to get over themselves. They'll work with each other when need be, but, for, you know, Ulthway, for example, when Ulthway starts pulling its, you know, zinch, all-seeing, future mystic crap, they will tell them to go to hell and quit using them. Like, they do not have any patience for that crap. Uh, anyway, back to Great Rift and Nari. It, it, as with all Eldar, it shook things up. Uh, they, of course, did their best to ignore it at first, as they do everything that goes on in the world. Could Found out they couldn't really do that. Uh, a Nurgle invasion led to them having to jettison a decent chunk of the craft world, so I know you were kind of asking earlier, Hal. Uh, that had to just they had to get rid of it, which incidentally, I think the, well, yeah, one, it smelled like, you know, dog shit. <laughs> it smelled like uh, two, I think there was like some lore about like Eldar, like insects or Nurgle stuff coming out of that, uh, which will of course okay. never get a model because chaos, you know, would be too fun to watch. So not getting that. Mm -hmm. Damn, Harry, the comments <laughs> calling out Eli. <laughs> Poor Eli Todd, like a... all married. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'm a sleepy guy. What can I say? Eli, Eli works hard, very hard. He's yeah, doing he's college doing and YouTube, as well as this. Marriage, yeah. He's doing his, his studies and everything. I'm getting ripped. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Busy boy. Yeah. Uh, they also uh, don't end up being the biggest fans of the Yanari either because uh, while your reign was in a meeting with them, Drizar, uh, the, you know, the Dark Eldar Phoenix Lord guy, found uh, his way through to Saimhan through a portal that somehow no one on the craft world knew about and killed a whole lot of important <laughs> people on it. So anyone that supported the Inari lost a bit of influence as a result of that. And also they lost a whole lot of important Eldar and, you know, the craft world. Not great. Thank you, Drizar. <laughs> <laughs> He's just there. Yeah. Being uh, helpful. They, uh, there was one, uh, it was Saim Han. They were fighting against Necrons on a planet, which was when we got that fun little lore tidbit about the vault of Slanesh demons that had been there since the war in heaven, which is sure a thing that I wish Games Workshop didn't add, but it is what it is. <laughs> uh, so they ended up teaming up with the Necrons uh, to hold back the incursion, and they even sent a couple seers they have to, once they had everything cleaned up to keep the vault secure. Which, you know, it's pretty cool of them. It seems like, you know, overall they're Happy to work with anyone if it's to fight against chaos or some other threat, which is pretty neat. Uh, they were also on Vigilus, which, long story short, because I'm not going to sum up the entirety of the Vigilus campaign <laughs> right now, uh, they 
went there to attack some chaos cultists and were mistaken for the Dark Eldar by a uh, some Imperial nobles and guard officers because the Dark Eldar had just been there earlier attacking guardsmen. And they opened fire on the Eldar, even when they were like, no, we're, we're, not, we're not Dark Eldar. Look at the spikes. We don't have any. Uh, so they ran off a bit. Marnius Kalgar met with them, and, ex- and in exchange for the Eldar's help in defeating Chaos and you know, the Orcs and everything, he would take all of the officials who ordered all those Eldar to be shot at, put them in a building, and lock the door behind them, and just told Simon to go nuts. <laughs> so, Jesus. one brutally murdered batch of Imperial officials later, uh, Simon started doing donuts in front of the orcs and uh, lured them into the orc <laughs> line or into the chaos lines and helped deliver a uh, imperial like torpedo into a like directly into Abaddon's flagship, I believe, on one of their ships. So, hey, they're uh, pretty chill to work with, turns out. They might ask to murder some of your leaders, but it's the Imperium. <laughs> your leaders are probably incompetent anyway. So, mm-hmm. you know, it works out. Uh, there was also, like I said, that Eldritch Omens a uh, little bit. Uh, that whole thing was uh, Chaos Warpsmith wanted some the like the world spirit of a maiden world for you know dark evil demon things. Eldar souls are nice and juicy. He could probably make some pretty potent soul like. Eli, what's the Resulta. awful Chaos Dragon thing you don't like? The model. The, the Heldrake. Heldrake, yeah. You know, he could probably <laughs> make some good Heldrakes out of the Eldar souls he pilfered. <laughs> Uh, Saim Han went to deal with them and at, you know, a decent cost, but given, you know, I actually, I've got the Eldritch Open books, not that, well, not like the lore thing, uh, not as much cost as you would think uh, for the Eldar. It wasn't a 99% of them got killed. It was just a solid victory. Not great, but hey, not bad. Uh, what are some last little things? Uh, wild Riders are their jet bike riders and pretty much every... Uh, Everyone who is not a chieftain who has to become an autarch is a wild rider. They love their jet bikes. They love their speed. On the battlefield, they are all about speed, vipers, the wind wind bikes, all that good stuff. Uh, even more so than any other, like even Bieltan, because you know, Bieltan does it with sudden strikes across the planet. Simon just has five million jet bikes doing donuts <laughs> in front of your lines at all moments, and it's really annoying. Uh, what else? Uh, clans are I those clans. <laughs> uh, the clans in there are pretty autonomous. They have the right to, you know, partake or refuse to partake in pretty much anything the craft world does. Uh, although in practice, if something big happens, they're probably all going to get on in it because they need that glory. Uh, may have may have inspired the orcs to think red is faster. And overall, probably the elder you'd most want to have a party with. They're pretty chill. They seem like they'd be pretty happy to have you as long as you're not a dick. Mm-hmm. I, I think we should say uh, I'll, when the Necrons went to sleep, Alay Talk were the ones who were going around uh, blowing up tomb worlds and looking for them <laughs> to kill them. That's another thing Alay Talk did. I like the, they, they exist, guys. Like, they exist. Going? Oh no, get rid of these. Yeah, like, bro, weeds. guys. Alay Talk. People care about us. I swear. Oh yeah, the the battle where the Necron <laughs> Lords fought against Alay Talk is when Orc and the Diviner out Farseered the Farseers with math, and then. Just like mess up their prophecy. I love, I love when the only thing my faction has isn't allowed to work. Thank you. I, I love the Inari trilogy. I love Psychic oh, Awakening. Yeah, there's I new, love Eldred. <laughs> there's a new same hand Wild Rider book that apparently I've I've only heard like horrible things about it. I don't know if you've read it or not. No, I haven't. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> Probably because the only news about it is bad. It's, it doesn't uh, exist if he hasn't read it. It's, fine. <laughs> it's called Wild Rider, and I've only seen like me. I, all I've my only knowledge is like the memes that I've seen about it. That it's. I just. Like, <laughs> I just want an elder book to be okay. I lo- okay <laughs> books are fine. You read them, you go, that was a decent book, and then you move on with your life. <laughs> they do the like same thing like they do with Tao, where they gave it to Phil Kelly. So he writes loves all the, the Tao. Yeah, he, Phil he Kelly writes, writes all good Xenos. He or... writes all the Farsight books, and yeah. that guy just does a great job. So just give it to someone who's good. Just and he wrote the like, older 
Eldar codexes stop, too. So stop giving Eldar books to people who hate the Eldar. <laughs> I, I just like yeah, the you know the bit in the Simpsons where it's the kid being beaten up and that's just Colin. They're publishing new books. It's like stop. He's already he's already dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> just grab someone from the Age oh. of Sigmar elf teams. They clearly love what they're doing. Let them write an Eldar book. Yeah, for real. Jeez. Mm. <laughs> oh no more Simon now. I, I was feeling good about Simon. I was I, I like talking about them and then you had to drop that on me. I think there's a cool bit where then they're like briefly in the Sal um Iron Hands novels where they end up fighting Katachan jungle fighters and then basically the Eldar goes like, damn, you're actually like pretty decent for a human, and then like proceeds to like slice his arm off while he's holding a grenade, and then the guy still fights. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like he's kind of impressed. Hmm. But then he's like, oh, you know, but he's still human, and just like gone. <laughs> uh, so they're they're shots. Nice. They represent sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ultramarine, one where he gets his head cut off at the top in that hammer and bolter episode where I can't remember which clan it is, but they just I don't want to think about that like, hammer and bolter episode. Don't, 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 don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Anyway. Ulthway. <laughs> oh. uh, the craft world oh. whose entire lore is just Eldred. <laughs> <laughs> and a Night uh, Lords trilogy, to be fair. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, there, there's, I've said, so they're somehow both the most and least famous craft world. Most, again, because like I said, their lore is Eldred. Eldred is hard carrying uh, the Eldar race and Ulthway in particular <laughs> on his back. Uh, he's, he's, he's 40k techless, just not nearly as competent, <laughs> fortunately. Tough. Uh, long story short, Ulthway was one of the, you know, the last craft worlds to leave the Eldar Empire. Like I said earlier, they they didn't quite get out of the way fully. It's like, you know, they got clipped. They didn't get T-boned by, you know, by the truck barreling towards them, but they got clipped. Uh, you know, they weren't instantly devoured, so, you know, they got that going for them. But, like I said, stuck close to the Eye of Terror. Which means that, at any given moment, they're either fighting chaos or preparing to fight chaos. The whole craft world is covered in battle scars. They just don't have time to repair it properly. And it's just generally not great. Like the first thing, it, let's say, you know, prior to the Great Rift, you're a Chaos Space Marine leaving the Eye of Terror. You're either going to run headfirst into Ulthway or Cadia. Uh, so this has led to, you know, they're trying to, uh, they have become all focused on like the paths of the Seer as a result. So they can predict when these Chaos attacks are coming and figure out the best way to, you know, get through it you know what the great minds think alike you know two heads are better than one all these seers coming together looking at fate and figuring out how do we not get murdered which on the downside means that they do not have that many other aspect paths not because they're particularly underpopulated compared to other craft worlds but because just most of the ones who might become like a you know a fire dragon or something like that are a warlock or a farseer but to counteract this, they're the only craft world that has a standing army. Uh, the Black Guardians. They're a, they're a proper like army, unlike the rest of the other Eldar Guardians who are just militia called up to fight in need. They train, they do all that stuff. Everyone on Ulthway can fight. Uh, in some ways, they have the most allies out of any Eldar. Uh, they'll work alongside pretty much anyone, uh, short of you know Chaos and the Tyranids, uh, Imperium, other Eldar probably even the orcs if they could somehow convince them to not just fight the pointy heads uh work with anyone in other ways because they're all manipulative bastards no one really likes working with them uh they know that probably in the long term their actions will result in lives being saved they're just so insufferable they will frequently just not yeah. tell you they're working to help everyone they will not even inform you there's any like fate reading going on. They'll just show me like, yes, this is what we're going to do. And then they turn around and start doing something else because they foresaw X needed to happen. And you just, you don't need to know about X. Don't worry about it, bro. They are the, <laughs> they are the like dude. Typical Eldar to me. <laughs> Simon Han would not be happy with Smug you saying that. Bastards. They're the kind of guys who put likes on uh, prank videos on YouTube. 
<laughs> but don't make them <laughs> themselves. The the uh, the model of their craft world is dude, trust me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have uh, they do have some you know more permanent allies though. Uh, like out of all of them, Navigator House Belisarius, who a uh, Navigator House for the Space Wolves. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, early on, and I mean like M thirty one, I believe it was. They helped House Belisarius out of a bit of a rough spot, uh, reverse their fortunes. And in return, uh, the navigators gifted them seven coins. Uh, anytime an Eldar from Ulthway presents a navigator, you know, of that house with a the coin, they drop whatever the hell they're doing and help that Eldar out with whatever task is asked of them, which has been done five times. So those last two, they better make it count. Hmm. That's could pretty you cool. Imagine if it oh, was go like ahead, the, I was going to say, could you imagine if it was like a really pressing thing and you left the coin at home like you like you put, oh, you're going to get a flight and you forget your passport and you get to the gate and you're like oh no <laughs> <laughs> like turning into eating your craft world or something trust me bro like colin said earlier trust yeah. me bro uh also I I had the corn i swear i had the coin yeah, yeah Make, also, look, house belisaurus is i think because after the space wars books i read it's like basically the biggest navigator house in yeah, like the Imperium, so it's actually pretty ridiculously powerful. It's yeah, it's they also huge. have like a space wolf honor guard because they have such close ties. They're like, yeah, we 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 send a yeah. couple of our guys to you just to protect you because you're that important. Yeah. So space wolves could be forced to work with. I say it's from what from what I read, they try and keep it on the down low a bit, yeah, uh, keep sense. the space wolves <laughs> in the dark about it. Uh, which. Mm. House Belisarius is still around and hasn't been executed for consorting with Xenos, so... <laughs> there, there's an but... opportunity here, Colin. You, you could have a book, right? It'll be a Space Wolf book, but it'll have the Ufwe in it and then Belisarius, and then you'll have a moment where they begrudgingly become friends and then, like, the Space Wolf gets the Eldar drunk on Mjod and he almost has to have, like, a liver transplant. And that'd be a fun <laughs> way to get some Eldar lore in there. Somehow. A good time was had by all. Livers? I'm assuming you know do. you can have that line for a knife here. You're actually pretty cool. Like, oh. <laughs> I do have a question about just in craft wars in general. Do they look like their own unique thing, or are they sort of reminiscent of like the old Eldar cities? Because essentially they're just floating cities, right? Uh, yeah, like inside them. I believe they're like when they were uh, when the fall was happening. They got as much stuff out of the like the fall as they could. You know, are any relics they might be able to snout or scrounge up? Obviously, people. Uh, that being said, like like the craft worlds, they were merchant vessels that would go centuries, if not longer, at a time without any contact with other Eldar between the worlds. So, if they did look like Eldar cities, it would probably be like ancient cities, even by Eldar standards. Because, like I said, like they like craft world is built; it's not going to see anyone else for a thousand years. And then another thousand, you know, on and on and on until, you know, the fall happens. That's cool, because to their equivalent, then, that's like, for us, if there was a, a ship just in the ocean that was filled with the architecture of, like, ancient Rome. Yeah. That's... <laughs> and it was like, so even to, like, Eldar later, they were like, oh, that's kind of neat. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of, <laughs> you know, a bit oh, of old whenever I, Whenever I think of Craft World, I think of Mass Effect, uh, uh, what are they call the, um, the Quarians, where, like, their whole species was completely decimated by AI. So then they fled on these big flotillas and they just roam the galaxy oh, on these yeah. massive oh, ships. Yeah. They're the ones and they're the like, suits. we can't breathe air outside of our enviro suits because we're our immune system's so weak. But it's just like a similar thing for like they're just nomadic, they roam around. It's like if we lose one of those ships, it's a bad day. It's a that, really bad day. That's what it is, yeah. You lose one craft roll, it's uh, uh. uh yeah. Uh let's see, where where was I at? I would say yeah, their uh, their history is like for every time they hurt the Imperium pretty horribly, they also have saved it. Uh, for example, I, and this is again, uh, Ulthway is Eldred. Uh, Eldred is the one you can blame Armageddon on. The orcs were going to threaten a small Eldar craft world. He redirected them straight to Armageddon <laughs> and led to all that fun stuff happening. Uh, on the plus Yarek. side, poor, oh, poor Yarek. Yarek. But on the plus side, he's the reason the uh, the last wall doctrine, the Imperial Fists, were able to get together. He calmed the warp and allowed them to just all meet up at Terra, which, by the way, pretty goddamn awesome. He told the entire warp to just chill the hell out for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, for their part with the Yonari, very mixed bag with things. 
because uh, you know on the one hand Eldred was the one to bring that about and especially in Oathway you don't get higher up on the totem pole than Eldred on the other hand the ritual was not a success and in order to perform the ritual because originally it was every Eldar dies then we get Iniad he went to a moon of basically psychic crystals after having stolen all of the seers he could from every craft world he just went into the infinity circuit grabbed their soul stones and said hey i'm gonna use you to make the god of the dead <laughs> so they weren't too happy with him they were going to execute him but they banished him instead and a large chunk of the craft world went with him because they still believed eldrad was you know he's he's the mover and shaker of the eldar he's the one who's going to get stuff done Let's go follow him. Let's join his exiles. Uh, at one point, he came back to rescue it from chaos and then promptly left again because he's still exiled. And overall, he uh, Ulthway is now free of the Eye of Terror. They can move a little bit farther because it's the Great Rift everywhere. Uh, on the downside, they are, as with pretty much every Eldar after the Inari stuff happened, a little bit diminished, still looking forward. They're still all about you know their future-seeing thing, though. None of them really had a great central change. And, uh, yeah, that is... Uh, They're also about... kind of in danger as well, currently. The whole thing is, um, in the Night Lords trilogy, they intervene with the Night Lords Legion because they believe a great prophecy about a prophet of the Eighth Legion will unite all the warbands and eventually mm. cause catastrophe on Orthway. So they basically are preparing for a massive confrontation with all the Night Lords. For... As you can probably guess, no reason other than it was prophesized. <laughs> so, but the yeah. fact that they they also the fact that they intervened put them on the Night Lords map, like on their radar. So that's the only reason. Like they they are basically the architects of their own destruction. In a oh, way. oh yeah. Since Ultimate is all about you know the psychers and stuff, they're the biggest victims of that. Where GW writers think they're being very clever when they go, oh, what they caused it by their own actions. <laughs> the fiftieth time we do this plot line is still original. <laughs> Look, we blew up an avatar of Kane too. Look, guys, it's, all, it's all the greatest Eldar hits. Especially with that Night Lords trilogy, but it just reminds me of Star Wars prequels. This is like, ah, the prophecy of the chosen was like, ah, that's the wrong one. It's his son in it. Oh no. Yeah. So basically, the Jedi Council are Uthway, and Samuel L. Jackson is Eldrad. Yeah. <laughs> How different would the galaxy be if Anakin was made a Jedi Master? Mm. <laughs> All good. We'd be sitting yeah. pretty. Still be a Republic. Which is the craft world mm. where they had to work with Komara to do the this the, the Eldar Seed had to do that massive bomb, and then they were like had to sacrifice. A few. I think that was Iandon, uh with like the ah, fire heart. Nice. Like the massive bomb where the Dark Eldar could have activated it remotely, but they're like, nah, just... <laughs> well, I think if it's what I'm thinking of, the Dark Eldar couldn't use it because all of like the old Eldar Empire None stuff... Yeah. yeah, and yeah. the Dark Eldar have left their psychic uh, aspects a trophy. So, But they're not going to give it to the Craft World Eldar because it's a big bomb and the Dark Eldar are selfish at the best of times. Uh, but they did eventually like give it to Iand and who activated it and then promptly put it away because the Eldar do not like to mess around with their super weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I was, I was going to say something else and then I don't remember. Uh, was it about Ulthway? They're going to get it? Uh, it was something about Ulthway and, you know, probably, yeah, they were going to get it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Eldred, for being all of the Ulthway lore. Truly, you are carrying it on your back. <laughs> oh. There's uh, uh, Luganeth. That's a craft world that I think they just <clears throat> made up for Fabius Bile to destroy, basically. Probably. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's like a couple other craft worlds I just briefly took notes on. The big five are the one that will do anything that matter. Uh, I guess, you know, there is Alton Sar, which is where Maugen Ra comes from. Uh, they got trapped in the, uh, in the warp. Uh, they didn't quite get out of the Eye of Terror, but somehow didn't get instantly devoured. Uh, and then 10,000 years later, Maugen Ra pulled it out of the warp. <laughs> Not, I don't know how that one works. If anyone has any suggestions, I would love to hear it. Maybe, no, uh, maybe it's like no time had passed with them at all. They were like, Jesus, we've been in this little thing for five minutes. Like, oh, thank mm -hmm. God we're saved. And then it's like, yo, you got maybe. Maugen Ra is the tactic from the Codex to start. He's like, we'll just do something crazy for fun. <laughs> Maugen Ra is the only elder that is allowed to have W's, it seems. Yeah. 
I've, I don't even mean how he still found them. I'm just like, how did he get it out? Is what I'm yeah, confused. Like it's, it's Rob, bro. <laughs> fair enough. He's he is built different. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, all of the Eldar think they're cursed because uh, they're saying, no, 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 you should be able to spend that long in the warp and still be <laughs> fine. What's going on there? Uh, so they never uh, they never take off uh, their helmets and they only speak in whispers. So something. Whether or not they're cursed, they were lost in the warp for 10,000 years. Something went down, and it's not generally not super uh, outgoing Eldar, as it were, because, you know, everyone so, else thinks they're cursed. So they probably get on really well with the car corridors, like, you do the whispering thing too. Yeah, we do the whispering thing. Oh, that's cool. You're probably. Also lost in the void. Yeah, we are too. We're cool. Nice. <laughs> uh, they're actually pretty close to Terra, uh, the craft world. Uh, although, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I believe the reason I don't think it's ever stated, uh, but I'm guessing them, the eh? what they can move about though they don't. Oh yeah, one one they can move, and two the Imperium is probably content with letting them sit there because they're like, well, they pretty clearly don't like chaos. You just kind of sit there and eat any Black Legion war bands coming this way mm-hmm. for us, will you? Uh, but yeah, uh, that's really them. There's a what are the other ones I wrote down? Uh, there's Mimira, which is the opposite of Altansar. They think all of the other Eldar are cursed, and they are the last true ones left. Uh, really, oh, not much to say more weird. about it. <laughs> Did they get uh, on a boat called the Mayflower, and then they decided to <laughs> leave? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, uh, what is that? You may look. I, I, I know that. You you may look. <laughs> M M Y E L O C. Yumbra. <laughs> Look, or whatever. I don't know. Like I apologize Jeez. for that pronunciation. What is that, <laughs> what is that name? Yeah, uh, they're uh, they're what I like to call the Forge World Craft World because their whole thing is Eldar Titans. Uh, so if you're playing them, Forge World loves you. Uh, there's Ilkaith. The, their they name translate their name translate into Knowledge of Blood, which is you know that goes pretty hard. They're all about bone singers. Uh, and then there's the final craft order I'd like to bring up, only because of the name, Crudorak. <laughs> uh, it is a craft world that is That sounds missing. like an orc an STD. What is that? <laughs> Probably. Uh, their lore, uh, they're from the Rogue Trader game. Uh, they got lost. <laughs> no, one, no, no one knows what the craft world is. Oh, Whoops. No. Uh, the, the, the ranger <laughs> companion, I guess, from the Rogue Trader game is from there. Mm. So neat, neat to see they didn't they make gave us a new craft world and just copy Iand in our old way or something. <laughs> yeah. Do we also mention the Black Library, like the actual? Uh, yeah, I guess it is a craft world. So a, a brief mention for now, at least. Uh, the Black Library is a craft world. It has the largest repository of knowledge in reality uh, inside of itself, especially on Chaos, and. Uh, it's guarded by the Harlequins and the last remaining Eldar god who hasn't been handicapped in some way, Kegarak, uh, the honk god, clown god. Uh, people keep trying to break in. Yeah, and it doesn't <laughs> really. To break in. It doesn't really work because the Harlequins, alongside Malgenra, are the only Eldar allowed to take anything resembling a W. Uh, and it's in the webway. So you first you have to get in the webway, then you have to go through the webway without getting murdered by its either its defenses or a chaos incursion. Then you need to get past the Harlequins, which is probably something you just need to kind of always consider. And then you need to get past a god. <laughs> and uh, I think the Poor Black Iron. Library even has its own like special defenses that even the Eldar are like, I have no idea what the hell this thing is. It's a bit cursed, isn't it? There's something not quite right with it. Yeah, uh, like even like probably because one, it has so much chaotic knowledge. Probably something went down. Went down. Oh, hello, uh, and two. <laughs> I... <It's> just... <laughs> he needs emotional support talking about all this Eldar stuff. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Poor Man has a loving man. life or loving wife. Make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, 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 the Black Library itself is. A few people have been invited to it, haven't they? Though, like yeah, the there's a has. Ephriel Stern, I think that sister of battle lady. Uh, there's some inquisitors are allowed every now and then if the Harlequins are sure that they're not going to fall to chaos. 
Uh, but for the most part, everyone who tries to break in is never heard from again. Or you're Azak Araman and you're a named character, so you're yeah, banished constantly. He, he's try. He literally is like a Scooby Doo villain. He's just like, he's <laughs> gosh darn kids. away with it too. If it weren't for those damn Harlequins, <laughs> were you meddling clowns and your stupid god too? <laughs> Yeah. Didn't uh, didn't he bring all of Armin's friends back for a second and then kill them all? Your ring did, you and then she brought back two of them. <laughs> she went, yeah. and she shunted them into the warp. <laughs> she she resurrected two Rubric Marines, and Armin went, "Holy hell, that's amazing!" And then she threw them into the warp, and he was like, "No!" And he like, ran after them. Uh, you know what I say to that? El Bozo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stop Armin. trying to break into the Black Library, and it won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while like one rubric marine gets revived and then so every time he's about to give up like one rubric marine gets revived and he's like Ariman, what the hell's going on and he's like you're alive i guess we gotta keep trying again boys <laughs> <laughs> time to kill 10 million people no he's yeah no one the meme of, if at first you don't succeed try 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 he try, truly try, is try, the rocky try, bow try, boa try, try, of try, chaos. <laughs> <laughs> jesus yeah, he never gives up. Poor Iron Man, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, he should. <laughs> is there any other craft wars though that like? Is, is it just mostly like the ones that are named, and there's nothing? It's just like random. I, yeah, like uh, yeah. I have, like I just uh, I will admit I did I did a bit of a sin. I pulled up the wiki for some of these. <laughs> you uh, have to. Hey, no random. problem using the wiki sometimes. Off stuff. Uh, yeah. Telenar. Let me let me let me just read you the opening paragraph. Is it? Is a minor craft world of the Asuriani. They could not think of a better opening than to just say they're a craft world. Uh, oh, good, another banger. It uh, truly is a craft world. They, they have good relations with Ally Talk. Oh, fucking wonderful, dude! It is it is the Alliance of Mid. That's just like the, the, the entry. This Space Marine chapter is known for being brutal and very courageous. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, did you mean all of them? Yeah. Uh. They have an affinity. What? I, what? what? <laughs> oh, it, I, I misread. I thought I mis. I thought it said the Eldar of, you know, Telenar have an affinity with the Elder of Telenar. It's like, oh, I fucking all. Oh. <laughs> they like the Harlequins, which is also a nothing statement <laughs> okay, because okay, every wow. Eldar likes the Harlequins. <laughs> Even the Dark Eldar like the like how the Harlequins. Yeah. It's like this. This, this, <laughs> this is like this is what the craft rules that aren't the main ones are. It's hey guys. They like the clowns. Yeah. They're it's there. Even, it's it even really worse is than sh- the successor chapter slop. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the short is a craft world energy is so high in some ways. <laughs> uh, there, there, there was a craft world. There was Malantai that got eaten by genes. No, they didn't get eaten by gene stealers. The uh, Neurolictor or Neurolober. They self sabotaged, didn't they? The dude one, of Malantai used yeah, to be unit. Dude, one of, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was one of the. Eldar psyker brain things ate their infinity circuit and then blew up the craft world basically. Yeah. They didn't blow it up, the Grey Knights. Like... A genes to the W. Common, isn't it? Like, common <laughs> well, that was, to that was a completely different one. There was a craft world uh, that I don't remember the name of. Which, you know, that, my bad, Pim. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it basically just left the galaxy. Like They, they dipped out early. <laughs> Wow. Uh, and this isn't the Inari books, which I think is another reason I don't want to remember the name of this fucking crap world. <laughs> uh, although this is one of the few cool things uh, they had, because they had no contact, they had nothing, you know, pet, no path system, no spirit stones. And then they found gene seals, and they're like, "Well, the hive mind's probably better than Slanesh. And so they willingly infected <laughs> themselves with gene stealers. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot no. about that. And mm-hmm. then somehow a gene stealer possessed an avatar of Kane. And then it stopped being cool. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Thank you. Thank you, Yanari. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm an avatar of Gene. Like, oh, no. Oh, is that, That's recent lore, you said? Relatively, Yanari. Jeez. So recent, wow. it, even at this point, yeah. like, that's not that is, recent yeah. anymore. They did it to try and escape the effects of Slut. Just because just existing yeah. as an Eldar, yeah. Slanesh can be draining you. So, so yeah, was, they... Uh, Oh, they had tried to circumvent that, but then they ended up just I can't sabotaging wait. the Gene yeah, like the... Oh I can't wait for the next big entry to the Eldar being that one of the craft world sides with the tower and helps with the greater good, and then they just have like an avatar of Kyle. And he's just a nice guy. Like, that that I was to be angry, but now I'm four armed cane, by the way. I heard in, so hard. I heard in like uh like two thousand like ten, like around like fourteen, something around that time. 
there there was kind of that on the tabletop, Andy. I think it was it was just called He's Taldar. Taldar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. the scourge in, of all local tabletop in games. Oh, no. Eldar Tau Alliance, whose best yeah. solution against you have a, no. <laughs> you'd have a farseer on a jet bike going around with like XVA battle suits, and he'd be casting the Eldar power <laughs> on the crisis suits, so they would just be like, impossible <laughs> to deal with, oh, pretty much. No. And the that solution like, to that was. Just, Bring a warlord titan to the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, my coke went down the wrong pipe. Yeah, that's <laughs> how heresy with the Eldar has caused Colin to have some sort of, you know, like medical emergency there. Just thank you, DJ Beast, for the four armed avatar of Kane is the best god. That is so true. No, at least if he had more Did arms, he might stand a chance. Hopefully. <laughs> 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 So sorry. And uh, uh, that's that's about the craft worlds. Oh, any any questions? Just about daily life on the craft world, I guess, because um, but for most of the time, they're not really... We only see the, most of the Eldar at war, so what's like yeah. most of the time they do on craft worlds? I guess they're just following the paths, and then... It is, like, like dependent on the craft worlds. Like I was saying, like, Saim Han is, you know, they're a lot more chill with it. Uh, they're a little bit more laid back. Um is it like all i talk again is uh much more strict with it so they're gonna be like you are doing this and only this uh but like the the crafts like i said are like the path why oh, man i'm having some problems the craft of the path the crafts the crafts are <laughs> the, the paths <laughs> the, the paths are like it's not just the warrior ones it's just warriors are the only ones we see because it's a tabletop war game uh like Craft of the botanist, stuff like that. Like there's like research paths, there's other stuff. They do So it's like, quite nice it can be like quite nice, like bougie inside these craft worlds. Yeah, like they're all they're all very disciplined and they're not like go they're generally not going out of their way to, you know, party it up because that's that's what caused Slanesh in the first place. So they don't but, have like a they don't have like a downtown Chicago. No, they do not have a Chicago. No, I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe the bits like, that Ali nice. Talk got space marined and smashed up. <laughs> Uh, but overall, like, yeah, like, there's, like, they're a post-scarcity society. They're they're disciplined, but they don't, like, they're not going to want for, like, basic necessities. Uh, craft worlds are pretty nice to live in. Damn. Great view as well, to be fair. Just looking yeah. out of the sky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, think, I think there's also, like, that, what is it, like, a, they're, they're bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. Like, they're, they're magical elf spaceships. <laughs> Well, the TARDIS. The typical Eldar like Doctor Who it's TARDIS actually bigger thing. on the inside, I promise. You know, it's like five yeah. inches, seven on a good day. What? Good day. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, like there, there's magical stuff going on with it. Like the, there's a building in all of them, the Dome of the Crystal Seers, which is where like the Far Seers and other specialized psychers will go to meditate. Uh, that's got you know it connects to the Infinity Circuit. Uh, that's I think that's where especially there's a lot of psychic shenanigans going on. They are they are like in day to day Eldar life. It's probably the highest standard of living in 40k, outside of like you know high lords of Terra. So is it kind of like space Rivendell? Yeah, that's what I like. Basically, to most of the time, yeah. then. Damn, they have like waterfalls <laughs> in space, like you asked. Yeah, I mean the the craft world. You know, is, it it is a spaceship, but it's also a spaceship the size of a planet that is the last refuge of their people. It's not like. Are they, are they planet size or continent size? I never can tell. Varies. They said that the Beale Tan one was moon sized, so I mean, I don't know. I think it, it varies. Take a choice. Uh, I mean, Fair continent enough. sized spaceship is still a pretty damn big spaceship. Yeah. Uh, the one in Battlefleet Gothic, like there's a mission where you can fight in front of one, it is. This, it, it takes up the screen. <laughs> Jeez. And, like stretches <laughs> way into the background. Oh. What about in comparison to say like the phalanx with the imperial fist? Because that's like the biggest thing the Imperium has. Is it like comparable size? A two phal two phalanxes. <laughs> phalanx. Oh yeah. You take a phalanx. The size of a small bigger. moon or large asteroid. Craft worlds are going to be way bigger than. Right. Like a, a large asteroid is. So like several blackstone fortresses combined would be one craft world. Blackstone yes. fortresses are pretty big, though. I thought because they're they're comparable to the phalanx, aren't they? They're like similar sizes. Or are they? That might be just because of the game, think, though. Oh, yeah, see, in, in the game. Uh, Battlefleet Gothic might have changed mm. that. 
I don't know, they they vary in size. Some of them will be small, some of them will be Well, yeah, big. it's and it's also one of those things like it depends on the writer. Like there's been books where like warlord titans are like I, a mile tall. <laughs> and then, you know, like I think the official estimate now that was like 144 meters. I have that number in my head. I don't know why. Uh yeah. but so like it depends on who's writing it, what kind of tone they're going for. Uh so craft world's like oh, I just looked warlord titan. Titan, Titan, thirty-two point <laughs> seven two meters. It was one hundred forty-four feet. Is about what that is. Um, right. Uh, I don't know. So I, I just kind of like the idea of you talking about the standard living inside the craft world. It's just like a letting agent being like, "Welcome to this craft world from beyond time. Every room has a swimming pool and an ice hockey table. Like, oh, this looks lovely." And then there's all the imperial citizens just like eating bits of their dead relatives to survive. You're like, yeah, <laughs> bit of a the protein standard bar. Living. Question you mark. Too. You too mm-hmm. could live on this craft world, except you're a human. We're going to shoot you. <laughs> no, humans now. We don't like your Allowed kind in. around here, literally. Just like the treehouse <laughs> things. It's like no monkey allowed to stay on the I think they're pretty cool, to be honest, though. Uh, although, again, like, we just need to see more of it. I will. I just don't know if they really have... A, like, in the grand narrative, they don't use or utilize something this cool enough. Like, if a battle takes place on a craft world... I mean... They had um, which is the one where it had the um, Legion of the Dam appeared? Is that I end in as well? I think yeah. that was. I think yeah. As I, I remember, was... blue and blue and yellow were in the were in the scheme. Of the, I'm pretty sure it happened to I end in. Was it I end in? Because no, it was it was in Hare. Oh. I end in was I end in was allied with them. It was like stuff after a high fleet Bayamoth. Uh, they were fighting high fleet Naga and destroyed it, and then the Legion of the Dam showed up, and then uh, yeah. To be fair, the only thing about a craft world is kind of like the assault of the rock. It's like you don't want to have that in a war zone. That's a bad risk. It's like only cataclysmic, like, oh, it's going to endanger our whole craft world. Are you going to have like it involved? I would assume they're not going to be like, let's just do a careless orbital bombardment and have it in proximity to ambush. Yeah, yeah, they they do not bring craft worlds to the front because as much as it's a gigantic ship with you know massive weapon batteries and whatnot, it's also their home. It's also where their nice 4K tellies are and all yeah. that stuff. It's like, I don't want that getting broken. It'll be so cool in a story though, just because a lot of stories often just go the space Hulk route, where if they want to have like just an enormous shipyard to play in, they could just pivot something into a craft world. Like Because again... You can imply that a lot of the sections of the craft world have been like essentially because the population is just not big enough. Some sections could could be dead and like empty, and any story taking place in there would be actually pretty sick because again, it's just different yeah. scenery in or maybe Warhammer. The, the yeah. gene stealers or the Tyranids invade one, and they have to like purge their craft world of all the like hidden like oh we haven't been in this district for ages because we haven't got enough people. Oh no, the Tyranids are now huddled in there. there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that means. That is like kind of almost standard on a lot of the craft worlds. Very few of them have enough population to like reach max capacity. Like especially Iandon, there's entire like noble courts consisting entirely of wraith guard and you know, wraith lords. Oh, hmm. uh, pretty eerie. I would say yeah, like the, yeah. the 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 most populated elder craft world is going to be a little bit lonely. The least populated is going to look like a ghost. Jesus. Yeah, you could even have a, one of the nicer craft worlds taking in some human refugees, and then they have like a delegation from another one. It's like, I smell a monkey. It's like, no, no. And then you have like a little bit of strife between them, like, we shouldn't just kill them because they are lesser species. And they're like, yes, we should. We have a little story about Can we rant about the fact that they call they don't call humans monka because it's a, <laughs> because they look like monkeys, but it's yeah. because it's a slur related to an, an ancient xenos that tried to enslave them. Yeah, that's just gay at all. One... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's one of those things. It's like, yeah, clearly out of universe monkey in universe. Mm, They're just being stupid with it. Or... <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> land, land speeder. Yeah, land Ark and lands land raider. And it's land. not called that because it speeds across <laughs> the land. It's invented by Ark and land, and then everyone joked about. That happening to the Astartes, and then it turns out Astarte was the name of the head of the project. <laughs> Thanks for the Horus Heresy. What's Raven the one with the Wraith um... Knights because they have spirits in them? It's because um, the Eldar known as Wraith Magul created the first. <laughs> 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 mm, I don't know. What's the one with um? It's the Walkers that 
the mechanicus can't turn them off because and they they leave them on treadmills oh, those, walking yeah. when they're not <laughs> being used in battle because they think if they turn them off they don't know how to turn them on yeah. again so they build like them, woke them up he turn them on them, and they and never turn die. them off again <laughs> So when they're not in battle, they're caught, there's an army of like walkers on treadmills constantly walking. <laughs> so. Nice. Or like a hamster wheel. That'd be good. I love Warhammer. Uh, I think with that being said, though, that was probably, uh, that was, well, that was all of the uh, craft wars that had lore we could say anything about. <laughs> well, uh, unless anyone else wants to add anything, last comments? No? I think we're Eldar are cool. I, Eldar I think I'd be cool. okay if they blew up Ally Talk. Come on! <laughs> The few pieces. <laughs> Humble they talk cool. Uh, with that being oh. said, though, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Uh, we do have stuff on Spotify if you want to listen to <clears> things on there. If it's like in offline mode, and oh, if you made it this far as well, probably should always ask us earlier. Like and subscribe because it helps us out. Uh, we do live law every sort of Friday, and you know, tune in. I think we've got another um, tier list one coming up soon, which will mm -hmm. we haven't quite decided that, but that will again it'll be something ridiculous. So <laughs> we're going to go <laughs> argue through that. And uh, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Take care, Bye. everyone. See ya. And remember, Ooh. the only good Eldar is a dead one. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Ooh. He says. So